Hi, this is Sid here. Um, I want to apologize for the long delay since the last episode. I had a lot of personal life stuff come up that I'm not going to get into right now, but let's just say I've been a very busy boy, and we recorded this a few weeks ago. I just haven't gotten around to editing it until just now. So, yeah, um, I just want to put that disclaimer there, and I hope you enjoy our ninth episode of the one cloth hour uh thank you again for listening and all the support um we love you uh and uh yeah i hope you enjoy are you recording by the way yeah i just started recording okay good because i want to get your reaction to this okay Uh, so what were you aware that the actor who plays hawk on twin peaks also voices Elisa's father on Gargoyles. Oh my god. What? What? That's so cool. Page. Oh my god. Yeah, I think he's like pigeonholed as like that Native American guy in a lot yeah, of Yeah, I mean, it's particularly the 90s, which Twin Peaks and Gargoyles were both. It, it, I mean, he probably voice acted for Gargoyles like right after Twin Peaks. Yeah, he probably did, because the, the dates would match up. Yeah, because 1993 and then 1994. So, welcome, everyone, yeah. to the ninth episode of the Loincloth Hour. Where uh, a it's podcast like... where we talk about sexy men and how they're drawn. How we watch, like, cartoons, and we see, like, the hot guys, and we're like, oh, this makes me feel a little gay. That's yeah, what this like podcast is all about. Not my, not my ten year old self. Like like you know, you ever just like hyper fixate on a certain character for over a decade? Yeah, I have done that. I I might know a thing or two about <laughs> that. <laughs> and um there's two of us. Uh, this is the worst drip ever. The, the, there's um, two of us. I think <laughs> there's three of us because I'm here there's, too. Yes, there's three of us. Well, I was getting to that. So okay, um, our, our you know our typical hosts are myself, Manicorn, and Sid. Uh, you just made it sound like that's joined... three people. <laughs> we're, we're joined by a third today, <laughs> a returning guest um, of Huron. Hello. The guest who is in the Huron. room with me right now uh it's, so yeah we all so lovely yes <laughs> i feel like we should redo that entire no no it's now. fine i love it i it. love it it's beautiful uh, oh my god i stuck we... out of the room in the middle of it to fix my eye yeah that made it more awkward for me because i was like is he coming <laughs> back because like i'm about to introduce him and he's not here anymore. <laughs> he's trying to get away <laughs> from you <laughs> Yeah, I just realized I could mute you, and then I wouldn't hear my own voice every time I talk. Oh, that's so much better then. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, that's beautiful. Wonderful. Our, our I technical love. Technical issues are being solved. They're not issues. They're literally just technicalities. Like they every, are every, issues. You, they're not. Croup <sighs> does not like that we have to set up audio at the beginning it's, of every recording. Well, because I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm always worried <laughs> it's gonna like fuck up. I'm like, we're gonna do the whole episode, and then we'll like get you to have the end, to and I'll be like, oh, the it all, it's all fucked up actually. The so we have omelet. to record the whole thing again. Yeah, and I just to... I'm afraid of that happening. It's like if I'm playing an RPG that... and I forget to save and I die, like all my motivation to play again just completely dies. Because I hate doing things over again. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So. Um. I, I've. I. You know. Again. <laughs> I. I've. I've been there as well myself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but well, anyways. Well, the thing I'm repeating is watching gargoyles, as we, Iran just said. Yeah. We. We are on episode nine. Yeah, Enter the best episode. Mc... <laughs> okay, dude, I have to tell you, I, I almost passed out laughing watching this episode. <laughs> There's so much that happens. Like, okay, before we even start, it, it was better than I remember it being. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, not... like, my memory of it is just, it looked, like, awful the whole time, which, like, 
Granted, it does. <laughs> this is a really badly animated episode. Yeah. But, like, the episode itself is fine. Like, there's nothing... I, I, I don't it. know. I think the writing is silly. I think it's, like, the it's, animation yeah, like, is but silly. But because it's silly, like, I, it does make me laugh a lot. I, I, I think it's, like, one of those so bad it's good moments. Like, this is just, like, mm -hmm. those rare moments where it's, like, a TV show you love. Like, uh... Make, putting out a bad episode, it's like, oh wait, no, this is kind of funny. I, I like this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, do we want to just get started? Just want to jump right in? Um, yeah, no, let's, uh, let's, let's just jump right in and see how the water is doing. Let yeah. me just scroll up through my, my notes. Oh, you have notes. No, I didn't, I don't have notes. <laughs> I, all I, did, okay. all, all I, I have I is just... Is you can just sit there and look beautiful and, you know, give us your little jokey jokes as we go. I'm just, like, scrolling up through all the screenshots we sent each other. Yeah, you took screenshots. That I was so feel like telling I someone was... to look beautiful on a podcast is an insult. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I mean, okay, close you your eyes. Sound beautiful clo cl cl close dull close your voice. eyes and then just picture the most beautiful uh, cat man you've ever seen. <laughs> that's that's what I okay, look like. I'm, I'm imagining Panthro from Thundercats. I'm imagining. Because he is the most beautiful cat man I think I've ever seen. Panthro is, like, okay. Panthro is hot. Fuck yeah, but you. he's like he's he's kind of like he he doesn't like he doesn't resonate cat energy to me. Not like um, not like uh, uh, saber tooth. Saber okay, saber tooth. Yeah, like I he's literally a giant like roided out <laughs> cat man, and I love him. <laughs> but yeah, so the episode begins on. Oh yeah, the first thing we see is like a crock pot that's it's like <laughs> bubbling. Almost like like double double <laughs> toil and trouble. Bubbling. You could say. Like fire burn and cauldron bubble. It's like know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> this is a Macbeth episode. Do you get it? You know, um It starts with, with I, I, I think I have to bubbling. address something before we continue though. <laughs> what? All the Drake and Josh references and jokes I made in the previous episodes have not aged well at all. What happened? What? Oh, oh wait, yeah, isn't like uh, didn't Drake's actor get caught for doing something? He apparently, I, I, I don't know all the details. I just know like he's like pleading guilty to child endangerment. I think he like abused someone. Mean? I don't know. Because usually they wouldn't. That wouldn't be child endangerment. What I don't. I don't know legal stuff. I, like, I th think I read the articles about it. and it Sounded like he connected a kid, a minor, with another, with an adult oh that led God. to something bad or something. Well, we'll have to scrub those jokes out of last episode so that they don't see the light. They're of already that. off. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry. We don't condone what the real life actors. Look, I have, I have, I have, I have very fond memories. <laughs> I have very fond memories of Drake and Josh. It's a funny show, but um, yeah, I, I don't condone. I don't know Drake <laughs> Bell personally enough to say that he's my um, he's he's like my my uh, my uh, alma mater. Your role model, your alma mater. All those jokes we made about the trash dogs, I, I don't... Uh, we take them back. No, the trash they dog stays. <laughs> I like the trash... Like, what if they just replace Drake's actor with the dog for Drake and Josh? That would be adorable. I, I would like, like that, that. Like, digitally remastered, like they did for the Star Wars prequels. <laughs> the movies. It's just like, Josh, like, getting really fed up with this, with this extremely sassy dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, okay, that's all I had to say on that matter, though. We can continue. Well, I, I appreciate that. But okay, so it turns out it's not three witches um, boiling this crockpot. It's Broadway. He looks like he's testing a delicious new recipe. He's he boiling like three inside. witches. Yeah, maybe. Um, there must be like a thousand new recipes he wants to make, right? Because he's in the modern day. He hasn't. We haven't seen him cooking before now. Like... Imagine flipping through a cookbook and like being like all this new shit that he can make and eat. Yeah, he's no, he's like he's there. like an excited little like uh, food boy. He's very, yeah. very happy. Like he, 
he brings the ladle like up to his lips and like somehow it gets all over his entire face. He looks uh, like okay, so like he looks he very looks like a hot mess. He, <laughs> he, he's like very into the food, um, with just the way he looks. Uh he's like He's got his tongue sticking out, like, he's blepping a little as he's... Like, uh, yeah, like, it gets all over his face, and, like, he licks it off himself. But, like, there's still, like, there's still so much of it, like, dripping down out of his mouth. He's a messy bitch right now. Yeah, I agree. He kind of um, reminds me of the spray of Patrick, where he's chewing on his, oh uh, God. trumpet. Well, yeah. I literally just saw that meme today. It's a That's good probably meme. how Broadway looks when he sucks dick, too. He just gets it all over himself. I, I, I think they're, you like... Think? I think Patrick and Broadway are, like, two sides of the same coin. I don't mo- want this. Mostly because they have the same voice I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I, I, I'll stop. You can keep going. You know, I, feel, I feel lucky, actually, that I've never seen an episode of Spongebob. I'm going to make so you watch an I, episode of Spongebob. I know. I know you should, you make will. him watch like, the band... When ba- I hear Broadway talk, though, make I don't him, think of Patrick. Make him watch, like, the Band Geeks episode, or, like, just okay. one of the good That's ones. That's a very good one. Actually, well, probably what's going to happen when I do watch Spongebob, when Patrick talks, I'll think of Broadway. Yeah. And I, get, like, I love that. And then get, turned on by it. That's probably uh, I love that. I'm gonna be attracted to Patrick, and it's gonna be really awkward. I mean, Patrick's a good person in the first two seasons before everyone becomes an asshole. Uh, like, but this is a different show entirely. <laughs> yeah, no, they're very. I'd say SpongeBob is like drastically different from Gargoyles. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? <laughs> well, I know you're we'll joking. We'll have to do a podcast but... up on SpongeBob someday too. Oh, no. <laughs> You even see? Just do a podcast of you watching SpongeBob for the first time. So we yeah, need, that sounds this, that sounds really fun. For I I I already have a bad feeling that this is gonna be like our most like meme episode. Uh oh. Because I um, don't. I don't know about that. <laughs> you so you sound you sound terrified. <laughs> I don't know if I want if I want this episode to be made into memes. Well. We haven't even made it through the first scene. I know, okay, we've memes. spent, like, five minutes talking about, like, the first ten seconds of the episode. Uh, like, we're talking, so, like, about, Nic- the we're talking about fucking Nickelodeon. Okay, okay, next scene. Uh, we see Hudson and Bronx. They're in the TV room of the castle. <laughs> and they're watching, like, literal Disney cartoons. They're watching um, Donald Duck. And Do- Donald Duck. Okay, but this is interesting, though. Um, okay, what they're watching is the premiere episode of Quack Pack. Oh which God. debuted what? which debuted in September of 1996. However, this episode of Gargoyles aired January 1995, over a year before Quack Pack aired. So this is the first time the world has seen any glimpse of Quack Pack the show, which I know nothing about by the way. I know it has like Huey doing Louie, they're teenagers and like Donald is like raising them or whatever. But uh, like, I just thought that was a, a neat historical thing uh, that I could educate everyone on. That this is the first time anybody saw Quack Pack. If you remember Regrets All Grown Up, it's the same thing. Yes, or that, oh that Flintstone show where um, Bam Bam and Bubble. Yeah, where they got married. They were like adults. Yeah. Yeah, I wish they would stop making shows like that. They're never good. All Grown Up uh, has some good episodes. Although maybe Quack Pack is great. I have no idea. No, Quack Pack's horrible. <laughs> So but actually, the funny part about this, though, is, like, Hudson is watching Donald Duck, um, and he's just, like, stroking his beard, like, very thoughtfully as he's watching. I love, I love that, because it seems like they didn't animate, like, a cartoon that he'd be watching, so they, they just figured, yeah, we'll go to, like, the Disney studio and just get, like, another Disney show yeah, as a little get, like, Easter egg. The fuck. But, like, like, he's not laughing at all, like, it's not like he's watching a funny show. It's this like is, like... Just, like they, like, he's like studying it. He's studying like, human culture. Well, this is, he kind of he kind of looks like my brother when he's watching Jimmy Neutron. Like he's not pleased or amused or anything. He's just like he's just like sitting there blank face and wondering. He's just taking it in. He's As someone who's seen the first episode of Quack Pack, I feel like that's a pretty accurate reaction. Wow. <laughs> okay, this is now the podcast where we're just dissing. Quack see, Pack. see, see. I love how Coop's just like, yeah. Fuck I don't Quack know Pack. how I feel about memes. Anyways, here's our Lord and Savior Quack Pack. 
<laughs> well, no, it's relevant because we're watching it in the show. <laughs> I'm not just talking about like, Quackpack like, like, like hell of I it. feel like this is less an episode about this episode of Gurgles and more just like on the history of like Disney and Nickelodeon. We're looking for anything else to talk about other than this episode. It's such a good episode. What are you talking about? Okay, um, okay but the scene after this, I actually do enjoy. Because Brooklyn and Lex, they're down in the hall. And they're I, definitely playing strip poker with each other. They are, and uh, it's it's and strip poker with gargoyles is even more fun because they don't really wear anything. Like they only have one piece of clothing on each. Hudson right? Hudson is the reigning champion, though. Yeah, because he has like the the other he has, shit he wears. He has more clothes than anyone in the Maybe show. That's yet. why he wears. It, yeah, he's, he's like the hottest the person in games. the show. Yeah. But, um, like, just the way this game is framed, it's like, it makes it seem like a really high-stakes game, and, like, I don't see them having anything else they can bet with each other, so, like, therefore it's definitely a threat poker. Yes. Um, and also Lexington wins. Yeah, Lexington, like, Lexington's, like, got this smug little face as he shows that he's got, like, a... I know. I don't even, like, if I look at the screenshot, it doesn't even look like he's got better cards. I think, like, they don't know how to play. Oh, I didn't even look at what the cards they Hold on. had. Yeah, I, I, I did. Um, I took one screenshot. Yeah, so, but... so Brooklyn has a 4, an ace, an 8, and a 3. And um, <laughs> Lexington has what looks like a heart, a spade, and I think a club. But, okay, those are the suits, but like, what are the cards, though? I don't, we can't see his numbers. I, okay, oh, wait. Okay. So wait, but, has, okay. Uh, he's got an, oh wait, no, 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 I'm an idiot, because you can count on the card. Okay, so he's got an ace. He's got like three aces. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, damn. oh well, okay. that would explain it. Yep, dead naked Yeah, Brooklyn. okay, okay. <laughs> So Brooklyn like just like, like starts muttering like oh I ought to uh, and it's uh, also uh, super uh, cute it, and it he like cute. gets up on the table like he's about to jump on Lexington like they're about to fuck yeah right like like you cheating son of a uh, this is probably how all their games end they just like and end it, up like they like pants away other. before like the the the, the sexing begins <laughs> um and that, uh, right <laughs> after that we go. <laughs> <laughs> we go into the library, and this is like one of my favorite shots in the whole show. Cause it's just Goliath like up on a ladder reading a book. I just think it looks good because it shows how reading is such an important part of his character, and it's a nice looking shot of him. It's a, isn't it also him just doing the classic pose? Of... Yeah, he's always doing that fucking pose. The thinker. Of, yeah. Yeah, like he's definitely in the thinker pose again. Yeah, he. That's that's just his iconic thing. I think the thinker stole it from him. He probably did. Uh, uh, so then, but after, after we're done, like, checking on the gargoyles, we go to, like, the real characters of this episode. We go to David Xanatos, uh, who's chilling in, like, what looks like the swankiest prison cell ever. Um, there's just a really comfortable-looking bed here. There's a nice-looking rug. He has a desk with, like, a personal computer. There's a TV. <laughs> there's what looks like, like, medieval paintings on his walls. Like, he just looks really comfortable. Um, and on a calendar that's by his bed, we see that it's currently October 28th, for those who are keeping track of every date on this show. But we see, circled in red, October 31st. So he's getting out of prison what very soon. He's getting out on Halloween. That. That's, like, so cursed. Yeah, especially because I think later on they have, an, they have a Halloween episode later in Season 2, don't they? So I guess a year goes by since that episode and this one. I forgot. Um, I forgot they had a Halloween so, episode. So yeah, the next episode sh should be the first Halloween episode, right? Yeah. And then the second. And then in the comics, there's another Halloween. And then in the comics, there's another Halloween because like the series ends in late September. Yeah. Or something. I don't know. Um, but so after that, we we cut to him eating with two guys. Um, I don't know who they are. They might be like his. They're like they're his prison's bitches. Yeah, and he's like he's looking at the food. He's like, just like mom used to make, if mom was a prison cook. And then you hear so, like <laughs> you hear the stock laughing in the background, and you hear the uh, that was me. Riff. That was me laughing that you heard. I just thought that was hilarious. <laughs> so is that the sole mention of his mother in this entire show? Oh my! It might be. Because we meet his dad later, but we never meet his mom. No, we never hear anything about her. Okay, well, we know she wasn't a prison cook. That's all that we know about her. 
<laughs> that's I, I'm just gonna like make Xanatos' mother's wiki page on the garbage <laughs> and I'll just put not a prison cook and then put a little happy face. <laughs> um and so right after that, uh we meet our other favorite, Owen Burnett, who is visiting Xanatos in jail. They're talking through like one of those So wait, you know, wait. Why the what, fuck what? is Owen's last name Burnett when he's blonde? I hate this shit. It's Burnett, Burnett not Brunette. It's close enough. It's got me <laughs> it's confused <sick>. now. <laughs> I don't know if there's spoilers that I could say about Owen. Uh, Let's move on the show is that. like the show is like twenty years old. Let's keep that I'm for a moment. Yeah, get that I'm far. saving that one. Okay. I know that there are people who are watching the show for the first time. Okay. Who also enough. listen to this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that now because we've received emails that say as such. Ah, uh, So, so yeah. Xanus is talking to Owen. He's like, all in all, I'd say my stay has been a learning experience. What does that mean? You're in jail! He means that the prison sex he's been having, he's been learning a lot from the other inmates. He's like, hmm, so this, That's is, how, this is how one tosses the salad, I see. Oh my god. <laughs> or it just means that, like, prison, like, isn't a consequence as long as you're rich. I feel like that might have also been what he meant. Sounds like, like he has that. a nice, comfy little apartment here. So Owen is just like, um... So do you want to destroy those gargoyles? Or, like, we haven't... You haven't given me explicit instructions yet, and it's kind of, like, time to figure that out. Um, so Xanatos says, I suppose, but it seems like such a waste. Still, I... I can't have them underfoot when I get home. Um, That's and then like... I'm just immediately interrupted by this insane Scottish man who just, like, <laughs> bursts through the door. He's, like, wearing, like, a prison guard uniform, too, and it's like, how did he get that? Does he work there? Did he, like, steal the clothes <laughs> off of someone? I have I have a lot of questions. So, okay, so this is Macbeth. Um, no, but so, he doesn't reveal it until, like, a minute, and then you hear it's, the... the da -da -da, okay, I, yeah, l okay, let's talk about let's talk about my questions after the scene is over, I guess. So, yeah, so... So he bursts in, and Owen looks at him, he's like, I believe I have ten minutes left. <laughs> Just, like, really Ten sassily. minutes left. Xanatos is pretty, uh, strict on, um, Owen putting his, his boobies on the, uh, glass. Oh my god. <laughs> he needs ten full minutes. <laughs> it is like Xanatos, and then, uh, Xanatos is all, doesn't like, even do anything, time he just wants. sits there. I'm here with a proposition for Mr. Xanatos. And then Macbeth puts his tits on the glass. Oh my, yeah, they, yeah. And he's like, my tits are much better than Owen's. And Xanatos is like intrigued by it. He's like, hmm. Um, the fan so fiction Macbeth writes is itself. All like, I understand you have an infestation, he says. And Xanatos is like, I don't recall, pe phoning pest control. Uh, and Macbeth says he's familiar with the nature of these pests. For a price, he'll take them off his hands. And that's when Xanatos is like, I see, and how do you go about this, Mr... And he says, they call me Macbeth. Da -da -da! And then this, like, this very loud bagpipe music just <laughs> like he, playing in the like, background. Like, he has, like, a band of bagpipe people following Like, every time him. Macbeth does literally anything, bagpipe music starts playing. <laughs> it's um, like, you know what it kind of reminds me of is, like, in the North Korea episode of Always Sunny, whenever, like, you hear, like, the, the um, that little whistle, that, like, yes. that, that Southeast Asian kind of, like, oriented uh, whistle sound effect whenever, like, they would do something at the North Korean bar. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're ethnic enough, you just get sound effects if, <laughs> if you're in, like, a TV cartoon world. Yes. Um, so, okay, so my question is, how long was Macbeth waiting for Xanatos and Owen to bring up gargoyles before he, like, burst into the room? Since, since episode one, he's been just, like, waiting He's just been the there the whole time, <laughs> even, even waiting before... for someone to bring them up. <laughs> even before Xanatos got arrested, he's like, yeah, whenever he goes to jail, I'm gonna be here. Waiting. So it seems like like infiltrating the jail, like stealing this outfit, like this is an operation that like took See, okay, some some okay, doing okay, to happen. Okay, right? but like the best part is it's like he didn't even need to go to like Xanatos for this. 
Like, he seems like he already knows where the gargoyles are. He could have just yeah, went there. Yeah, he does. But no, he ha he wanted to check in with Xanatos first. Well, he didn't want to step on any toes. He wanted to make sure that Xanatos was, like, cool with it. Or do you, you know? have permission to let me, like, uh, kill or kidnap these, these like, strong muscle men you have living at your castle? Yes. Which, you know, Xanatos might have a problem with, because he, he wants to kidnap them himself. Yeah, um, exactly. Before, you know, perform oral on, like, all of them. So he doesn't want anyone else edging in on his territory. He's been practicing in prison. We should we should describe Mitch Beth while we're here, I he's guess. He's, like, he's got white hair and very thick eyebrows, and he's got very pretty blue eyes. He, his eyes actually look really nice in this whole episode. Like, they're uh, one of the has, few like, a, things... a very, like, what? full, like, white beard, too. One of the few things that look nice in this episode is Macbeth's eyes. Yeah. Like, and, like he also has, I... like, a really nice body. Like, I don't know how old he's supposed to appear. Um, but he's, like, just, like, you know, Gargoyle's, <laughs> like, 20th hot older Dilf character who's It's, like, up. it's kind of like, um, Wolf, if Wolf were, like, like, He looks more, smaller. like, manicured than Wolf is. He looks He's like... a more dignified wolf. <laughs> no, I, that's what I'm saying. If Wolf were like not like a big dirty man, instead of instead of that, just like this this smallish, he's kind of smaller, but not too small. Kind of like a uh, punky old man. Like who he's hunts still bigger than the average guy, but he's he's not like jacked like Wolf is. No, oh god, ja Wolf is like he's a big man. He, mm, I so see. Big. Okay. Well... I wouldn't so say he, he's not Jax, considering he literally picks up Broadway one-handed at one okay. point during this episode. He is Jax. He's just slightly smaller than Wolf, who is huge. Okay. Wolf is <laughs> Are we big. all happy now? See, okay, but the thing is, Macbeth <laughs> is combat experience, whereas Wolf is just, like, he, he learns everything from, like, watching gay wrestling porn. Yeah, he's like, I want to do that. that that's how he about... fights the gargoyles. Unlike Dingo, who learned everything fighting in the South American wilderness or whatever BS that was. I don't know. I wouldn't last a week in a Central, Central American, American War. war. <laughs> what the fuck, Dingo? Okay, so we go to, to the next, the following sunset. Uh, Macbeth is now up at the tower of Castle Wyvern, where all the guards are. See, okay, are. but wouldn't this have been, a, like, a cooler introduction to Macbeth if, like, Elisa just, like, came up and there's this dramatic scene where she sees a stranger at the castle? Well, that's exactly what does happen. No, yeah. but it's, it happens so quick, like, in a matter of, like, three seconds. Yeah, she's, like, immediate. like, he's there, and then she's, like, immediately there, and be like, who the fuck are you? What are you doing? Because he's also, he's also, like, in, like, body armor, he has, like, this trench coat on. Like, he looks like he's there to get up to some shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, we could have cut that entire scene between him and, uh, Xanatos, because no. nothing ever comes of their relationship. No. Ever. Yeah, yeah and exactly. You, sadly, you are right, but I do like that scene a lot, because I laugh at it, and it's funny. <laughs> no, but it's like, it's like, even at the end of the episode, it implicates that, like, they're gonna be working together at some point, and I don't think that yeah, ever they, happens. they never really do. I, I, I like that they speak in code with each other, too, like, talking about, like, Pest control and like I don't know. I just thought it was cute. Macbeth, they're like, two cute guys. I think in mm -hmm. another lifetime, they could end up as boyfriends together. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Macbeth's probably fucked at least one or two of Xanatos's like ancestors. I feel like yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, what if we find out that like Macbeth? is Xanatos' like great 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 grandfather or something. That'd be kind of cool. That would be I, crazy. I mean, I guess it'd be kind of weird, but I mean, you know, in a well, cool I mean, way. With how long Macbeth has been alive, he's probably the ancestor of a lot of people at this point. Yeah. yeah. He could be the ancestor of like everyone in the show. He could now. be my yes. ancestor. Oh my god. Yeah, that's why I'm so good at hunting gargoyles. Well, you're good at capturing uh, hot screenshots of them. Yeah, that's where I get it from. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Okay, so Elisa is there at the tower too, and she's like, uh, who are you? 
And then Mitch Beth says, I would hate to spoil the surprise by what telling is, you. <laughs> what the lady. fuck is wrong with this guy? Like, <laughs> Macbeth is so extra this whole episode. I can't fucking stand it. He's... I just thought it was really funny he said milady. Like, I imagine him, like, you know, like, doffing his cap. He's like, he's like he tipping a fedora it. at her. Yeah, he's like, well, he's while a... you, you know, partied, I studied the blade. Macbeth is a uh, simp. <laughs> And then Elisa's like, I hate surprises. She flashes her badge at him. Um, and then, like, also, we see, like, Owen just watching him on camera, too, which also made me laugh, because he's yeah. just, like, standing there very <laughs> Owen, busily, Owen shows just, up like, several times faces. for no reason. Just I, we, This is such a good Owen episode. Okay. Like, he makes me laugh every time we see him. God. I love him so much. I want to adopt him. <laughs> um, but, okay, so Elisa sees that the sun is going to go down soon, she's, so she's all like, you and I should go inside and talk, uh, whoever you are. And then Macbeth is like, I don't think I will do that, actually. And then the sun sets, like, like super fast, like it always fucking He also, like, show. explains, like, that he's like, I know what these creatures are. No, yeah, but he I'm says, pretty sure he what he says, says a few is, things like that. You protect no secrets, milady. Uh -huh. <laughs> are you here for secrets? Are you here for <laughs> secrets? <laughs> You have secrets. So yeah, so like he he likes to just sort of tell people like I already know like all the bullshit that you're hiding from me because I'm Macbeth and I have my he, web of informants. At least yes. it's just like I this fucking guy. Yeah, at least doesn't know what the fuck to do. She's like, okay, like this weirdo's up here. Uh, but see, all the gargoyles wake up because the sun goes down. They're, like Goliath gets a really hot flexing moment, like he always does. You know, his old hat okay. by now. Um, and we also see, like, stone chips fly by Macbeth's face, and for some reason they're colored yellow in this episode. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> um, <laughs> but just, you know, one more the gamma rays. Error. Yeah. Um, but they immediately clock Macbeth, and Lex is all like, uh, like, who's your friend, Elisa? And then Broadway gets to be, like, her, her knight in shiny armor, like he always is now, and he's all like, this guy bothering ya? Ooh. Uh, yeah, like he's like he's gonna rough him up. Excuse me, Queen. Is he bothering you? Exactly. Yes. Uh, and Macbeth is all like, uh, he says something like, "I'm here to send an invitation to leave this drafty old castle and be guests at my home." Uh, and Goliath's just like, "I'm afraid we must refuse." And Macbeth says, "And I'm afraid I must insist." And he draws back his trench coat to reveal like noticeable bulge at them in he's, display of dominance. He's got like, his he sort of, like thrust. He's got his at hands them. at his hips. <laughs> like he's just like, look how big my dick is, everybody. Yeah, which is weird because as we know, Goliath canonically has an, an immense dick. Yeah. So like, but Macbeth is sort of saying like, as big as you are, I can still top you. I I felt like he was saying. Um... <laughs> So anyway, it's fight time now. Yeah, uh, Broadway's fight. up first. He goes all like, I think you should leave. And then, like, Macbeth, like, judo flips him. I don't know what you're laughing at. Am I, am I awkward talking? Just, like, laughing at the it's fight time now transition it's fight time into, the now. Fight, into the fight sequence. So Broadway gets judo flipped, and like, into I'm also Hudson. laughing at that, because it's like, Broadway's, like... <laughs> He's not easy to lift. Yeah, well, not if you're, unless you're Macbeth, I guess. I guess he's, he's been training just for this. Tossed Broadway over, like, yeah, like very nothing. easily. I don't think like even Wolf could lift Broadway for some reason. Like Wolf is like buffer, but he's like. Well, I think Macbeth like used Broadway's momentum against him. Like a real martial artist would. Wolf would, like, he'd be like that time Mac tried to choke out Charlie and he'd just choke out himself. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that's a reference to. It's fine. It's always sunny. <laughs> oh, okay. So, okay, so, but Broadway, like, hits Hudson. They both fall off the tower together. Um, if you slow mo this part, you do see full ass on Broadway. As ah, they're like tumbling. You're so like, head good. Over heels. You're so it, good because, at because finding the Broadway is shit ass. this episode, though, like, there's nothing actually there. It's just like, there's just nothing, and his tail is coming out of That's just like true. a big round of blueness. There's no cheek or anything. <laughs> they don't it's have pathetic. butts. It's just like blue null. Yeah, our lives are pain. Um, it also looks like he and Hudson are like kissing each other and maybe 69ing each other on the way down. Um, 
I'm just putting that out there. Yeah. But anyway, right after that, Macbeth just throws some gas canisters, um, like, on the floor. Everyone goes all like, uh, uh, uh. Um, Macbeth is unaffected, and I don't know why. <laughs> Because he doesn't immune. put on a, a mask or anything. He puts on, like, infrared goggles. <laughs> See, it's like, it would make more sense if, like, Elisa weren't coughing, too. And then you'd be yeah, all like... she is. You'd be like, oh, maybe it only affects gargoyles. <laughs> but she's... He literally... This I woman have... this woman in crutches. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think they figured out how Macbeth's powers worked yet because they don't quite line up with. What I, 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 and this, the thing with this yeah. whole episode is it's such a rushed and sloppily done introduction for Macbeth. Like Huron and I were saying uh, after he finished watching it, like we we do think that they knew Macbeth's like all of his backstory already when they did this episode, but like this just isn't the best introduction to him. <laughs> I feel like, like, it's nice that we get lots of hints about, like, his real nature and everything, but this episode isn't... <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty stupid. <laughs> um, but, okay, there's fighting, Bronx tries to, like, get Macbeth, but he, like, dodges him, and then, like, Bronx accidentally tackles Lexington instead, um, and then Macbeth shoots, like, this net over them, which then, like, electrocutes them, it's an electric net, so, like, they're both out of the fight. Um, Elisa gets her gun out, which I appreciate, although she doesn't use it in this scene. Um, and then Goliath tries to get Macbeth, like, they're all taking turns. That's how you know that Macbeth is gonna rock all of them, because they're just, like, taking turns and each getting rocked one after the other. Um, rocked. So, like, Goliath tries to, like, tackle him. Macbeth somehow, like, leaps straight over him. Um, and then he jump kicks Brooklyn off the tower and, like, rides him down. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of strange. And then he shoots a net over Brooklyn too. So like, <clears throat> that's most of the gargoyles dispatched like immediately. Which, like, is it badly animated? Yes. Um, is it still hot to see a bunch of like muscular, powerful gargoyles all neutralized by only one guy? Uh, yeah. Okay. It is. Okay, but can we talk about? Go how Goliath looks this episode. Oh my god. Oh! Okay. We have this discussion. In, in one scene during this fight, we see that the animators have drawn on, like, meticulously drawn on, like, sculpted abs onto him, which Goliath never has. No. Like, Goliath, like, he's always built looking, but, like, they never, he never has, like, a six pack. No. Um,. His face is also really weird for most he of He looks fight. like a beady-eyed goblin. For... He looks like... I thought he looked like a cat. Like, a really ugly cat. Well, what's, the, dif what's, the, what's the difference between that and a beady-eyed um, goblin? I guess nothing, yeah. Like, everyone's really off-model. <laughs> like, every character. Like, no one escapes this episode like, no. looking good. Because they all look... They all look <laughs> bad pretty much the whole time. <laughs> God. No one is. I don't think him. Owen ever looks bad. Okay, Owen is always perfect though. He's beautiful. He, Owen has no faults. Owen He's has never done anything wrong ability. in his life ever. Owen has the ability to always stay on model no matter who's animating. I think because he's so simple looking, it's probably hard to mess him up. I, 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 I don't know about that. Actually, according to Garg Wiki, oh boy, um, this <laughs> episode. Was actually they delayed this episode for five weeks. They what ended the up um, fuck? Re they ended up re-airing um, the five uh, the five beginning episodes, whatever they were called. Awakening. <laughs> yeah, they they they, they re-aired the five parter of Awakening to give themselves extra time to redo some of the some of the shots in this episode. So as bad as this episode looks, this is their second shot at. Oh, doing what the it. fuck, dude? I can all like I can only What did it what oh my god. What if they just like animated full like like balls and ass on the gargoyles and then they realized oh we shouldn't do that so they had I to I don't think that's the reason they <laughs> sent it back. <laughs> it's not yeah, no, it's it's that's probably not that's probably not why. <laughs> probably. Well this was probably the third time. The version we're watching, so almost all of the episodes got another round of edits after their initial air. I don't know if they did they yeah, he's talked about it multiple times. Oh, okay, cool. Like, the last episode, we know the original airing had a bunch of extra blood that wasn't supposed to be there. Right, yes, yeah, so there's at least three different versions. Yeah. Okay. 
That's crazy. So yeah, I maybe maybe on their fourth try that they'll do one day, <laughs> they'll get it right finally. Who knows? Who knows? Jesus, this episode is fine. It looks fine. Um, um you should check the chat though, because I don't know if like Owen's always you know looked looked a hundred percent. Owen, I'm not looking. I know he's <laughs> the one where he has a small little head and giant shoulders. I don't need to look at it again. Even back then, he looks beautiful, though. <laughs> I've never seen this shot before. He looks fantastic. Fuck he, you. He, he, he's, it's um, David Byrne. He's here to announce the new Talking Heads reunion. Okay, but anyway, speaking of Owen, he's watching all of this happening. <laughs> On Xantos' like, beautiful big screen TV that he has in his office. <laughs> like, Owen, um, no one cares. You see him like raise like one solitary eyebrow. They animate and his then, like, whole he, he eyebrow. Very bristly, like leaves the office. He like with his like hands and fists, he, just being like, he, "I better." He does see have guys like a streets. very like like he's got like a very feminine run style. It's it's such a awkwardly animated like running, oh my God. like thing. When when they were when, when the rocks were falling on him in Awakening oh Part God. Five, like he in the way he ran away, it was kind of <laughs> he similar. He had to shield his his face. He, there were rocks falling. Yeah, but like he looked like a sissy. You look like a sissy. I will not take this, I don't. this sissy shaming on Owen, on beautiful Owen. Um, but okay, so he comes out just as Macbeth is like kicking Goliath into a, an electrical panel, and like a fire starts. Like <laughs> the... you see rubble everywhere. <laughs> like gargoyles just draped over various uh, like castle ornaments. So Owen's all like, "Mr. Macbeth, Mr. Xanto has hired you to fumigate his castle, not destroy it." Uh, which I just thought was funny because he's like, "It's okay if you're beating the crap out of these gargoyles, but don't fuck up like." the property value. Yeah, okay? yeah. Uh, so, so Macbeth is, like, quite right. We'll continue this elsewhere. Um, so Macbeth takes out this, like, truly enormous remote control, <laughs> he, which only has one button on it, which he presses, um, and then, like, uh, like, these things come down out of the sky and, like, grab uh, Brooklyn, Lexington, and Bronx, who are all still, like, trapped in nets. And it brings him up into, like, a floating airship thing that he has. <laughs> Where did he make he just, get this airship, though? Just, he uh, has, he an has airship. a personal... He's got, like, a hover car airship with, like, multiple functions and a remote control attached to well, it. Well, like, we know it's that like this like world a drone. Have, like, like, they, we have... They're more technologically advanced in some ways, because they have, like, floating airships all over the place. Or, at least, it's not... It doesn't seem uncommon that there are airships around. I don't know, uh, but this is like this is like a very cute, like little airship, like a two seater <laughs> for Macbeth. It's more of just like a helicopter, but I don't know why it wasn't just a helicopter. They just want to <laughs> yeah. make it look cool. Oh my god! Um, but so as as Macbeth is flying away with like half the clan, uh, just in the back of this airship, Goliath like jumps on it. He looks like a giant stray cat. He's like like ah. And yeah. then Macbeth also has another button that just electrifies his whole ship, and Goliath falls, like, screaming it's... to the ground, you know, like like he does. It... There's so much electrical play in this episode. Yeah, there's a lot of shock play. This is, like, the big, yeah, like, what? electrical kink episode. Yeah. This is what starts us off. There are Brooklyn. a lot of electrocutions. I blame Brooklyn come. for that more than anyone else in this episode. Yeah, I, I fully agree, actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Next scene. Um, <laughs> Goliath and Elisa are having the same goddamn arguments again. <laughs> over um, how, like, the castle isn't safe. They shouldn't live Like, they there. literally just got attacked at the castle, Yeah, though. they just got attacked! But, like, the... But Goliath is still just like, no, we're fine. Like, they I, just got attacked! I hate how they And half afraid. of them got okay. kidnapped. In, like, the last few episodes, you could at least, like, look at it, the subtext of, like, you know, he's very traumatized and he doesn't want to lose something. But this episode, he's just, like, a literal fucking, like, bitch about it. He's such an idiot. Like, I don't know why, like, why, what does Elisa even see like, in he him? Like, he him doesn't even, like, like... why does she stay with him? He stops why valuing... Why does he still, like, date this idiot? Like, he stops valuing, like, the own gargoyle safety is the problem in this episode, like, which is, like, really fucking annoying. It's so bad. Yeah, Alisa is like, read my lips. You are not safe here. 
Um, and I, I, I feel like Goliath knows that he's wrong, though. He does. And that's, like, making him more angry. Because, like, now, yeah. like, his pride is also just like, well, I can't, like, I have to keep up, like, my previous position, but even I know it's stupid now. So, like, he's, like, even more pissed off. So he's all like, I'm gonna go find them. You two, he points at, um, Hudson and Broadway, who did fuck all in that fight. They fell off the castle and got knocked unconscious. These mm. fucking losers. He's like, you two are gonna stay here and protect our home. Um, and they're all just like, okay, daddy. <laughs> but once he's, once he's gone, though, um, they both, like, agree with Elisa. They're like, no, yeah, like, you're right. Like, he's being an idiot right now. Um, but Hudson can't go, like, directly against Goliath. Um, because Goliath is the clan leader, but yes. Elisa's all like, she starts working on them, like, okay, but, like, your home is not safe. Well, no, that's not what she says. She says, this is not your home. Yes, she does. She says, this is not your home. And it hasn't been their home since they woke up. Um, so then we go, let's see, let's see. Uh, we go to a view of some seaside cliffs, which then pans up to Macbeth's castle that he has. Uh, there's so many castles in this show. Um, <laughs> yes. Being from the Hudson Valley myself, like I regret saying there are not this many castles in like real life New York State. Um, although I wish there were, but then we see we see inside the castle. A there's a, there are a couple, I, but not as many of this show might lead you to believe. I like I like I saying, like <laughs> the thing is it's like Macbeth doesn't even just like have a castle. It's almost like his own like little fortress. There's multiple towers and stuff. He has a really cool looking castle too. Yeah, it doesn't. Like, it's not it, as cool as Castle Liver. Yeah, yeah, really cool. okay, but like it doesn't fucking last long, even though it, it looks really doesn't. cool. Like the whole. But then, okay, but when we see Macbeth again, though, he has another castle. What the <laughs> fuck? Like, how many is... castles do you think he has? He just, like, smoked a bunch of crack and bought, like, 30 castles one day. <laughs> In New York. Because there's just castles well, up for sale. I feel like this, this place wasn't a real castle. Like, he built, bought it and then remodeled it and put, like, castle facades over everything, and it's oh, really... Like, like how we want to make our house look here. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> like, Macbeth really took a hold of the real estate in New York that year. I love him. But, okay, we see inside the castle, and, like, it's full of, like, art. Um, there's paintings up on the walls. There's, like, marble busts. Um, it looks very beautiful. I just your notes and thought that and then, you said butts. Yeah, there's butts. Uh, I the, wish he had busts. He, he has, butts. like, just, like, statues of giant butts all yeah, around his But, castle. I mean, like, he probably does have those, but they're, like, not in, like, the display room. They're, like, in his private collection, know what I'm saying? Yeah, then they have, like, targets on them so that whenever he's oh practicing... God. We were making this joke about Xanatos, like, having that same thing, kind of. No, he, he Xanatos put the target on himself and then had the steel clan <laughs> shoot dildos at his butt. Okay. That's a completely different joke. <laughs> okay, well there were targets involved and butts. <laughs> but we also see in this big room we're looking at, um, that there's this very large stained glass window that has like a human looking figure on the bottom of it, and then above it's what looks like like a very angelic looking gargoyle oh. figure, like oh, almost like mm. beaming light down at the human. Mm, I wouldn't say angelic necessarily. Yeah, I would say well, maybe I like the by the light. I, maybe the like demonic. I okay, well, yeah, because we see a silhouette, and once again, <laughs> it's like as, so as obviously every... demona. <laughs> this is the third time <laughs> we've seen a, a mysterious silhouette, and it was demona. <laughs> And it was very obviously demonic. She's a mysterious gal. She, <laughs> but she is what, isn't. This is what happens when you make really good character designs and everyone has their very recognizable silhouette. Oh my god. Um, we also we also hear like bagpipe playing again very loudly as we see the, the stained glass. <laughs> okay, but the stained glass doesn't matter because we're actually going downstairs. Um, to make Beth's, like, bizarrely rat-infested dungeon. Oh, yeah. There's, we see so many rats on our way down We see, here. like, rats, really we see rats, like, fighting with each other, like, dancing yeah, with each other. Like, we see Charlie, I, I we see Charlie bashing <laughs> some rats in one scene. Yeah, to see if there's any rings or coins inside them. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, but, so, Lexington and Brooklyn... 
It's set up like they're in a cage together, and Bronx is in another <laughs> cage, like within this dungeon that Macbeth has down in his basement. And there's also like what looks like lighting equipment around them, like it's a film set or something. Well, that's where um, he films his kinky gargoyle porn down is, there. Is this a porn studio? Is is he film? Is this like their OnlyFans that he's setting up? It for was them? it was him and Demona's private quarters at one point. Oh no! Oh god! Okay, but so Brooklyn is all like, "Who is this Macbeth anyway?" And Lex says, "The name sounds familiar. Wait, I remember. Goliath was talking about a play called Macbeth by some, by some new writer named Shakespeare." An iconic Gargoyles quote. Okay, but That's this quote funny. actually makes me very annoyed. I know. Okay, um, because as we know, Shakespeare lived as as best as his story can determine. From 1564 to 1616. Yeah. Uh, the gargoyles put under their curse in 994. Yeah. So how did they know about Shakespeare? Unless, no, this it is was my explanation, liter- unless they read about what? Shakespeare after they came back to my death. That, that was the, what the point that was of the that point. statement was. That was okay. the initial conclusion. The I, don't if, know, if you, I don't know how you got lie. to like the 15th. No, well, it seemed like the way he but, said it, like Delia no, no. called him before. He said new. Oh, new he said new, new writers. New. Like new to them. Yes. Okay. Okay, maybe I missed Cause, cause, it. Because, okay, okay, if it knew <laughs> that it wasn't back then, it's they were newer. Okay. He, he, and he was specifically saying that Goliath was reading one of Shakespeare's stories. Okay, so that makes more sense. In the library that they have. The, the quote, Listen, the quote, I'm here to be smart. The okay? quote annoyed you because it made you think. Jokes. Oh my god. Everyone's new to them. Okay, well, I got to at least spit some Shakespeare facts at us before you two chop me down. Okay, so Brooklyn then is like, oh, uh, ever read it? And he says, no, maybe we should. It's like <laughs> their first, like, like literacy okay. PSA for this show. They just they, they stare right at the camera as it pans away. Yeah, they, they say do. That too. And it's really funny, actually, that this episode actually did make me, as a middle schooler, Seek out Macbeth, the play, and I did read it. I watched so um, <laughs> I watched like two or three of the movies in my school, and we also read the play. I th- I didn't I didn't read the play. I found like a novelization of the play, which was like easier for me to read as a kid. I watched them. Um, uh, oh yeah. god, there was this really really amazing like um, it was a recent film actually, a film adaptation of Macbeth, um, and it was really good. Um, who directed it? Was it in 2015? Yeah, it was, uh... It was directed by Justin Kurzel, and it was really good. Really? I should seek it out. Although, okay, I'm just thinking now, is it weird that these two gargoyles naturally link the Macbeth who just kidnapped them to this Macbeth who was in a play? Like, why wouldn't they just think it was the same guy with a different... I mean, a different guy with the same name? I, like, you're confusing me. I think, okay, well, the thing is, the characters in this situation are confused by the circumstances to begin with, and I think you're just confusing yourself further by trying to make I sense of their confusion. Myself. Yeah. All right, can I give my two cents on this? Yes, you may. So, okay, so have, Lex asks, have you ever heard of a Macbeth? No, he says, who is this Macbeth? Who is this Macbeth? And then oh. he brings up, oh, didn't, Gar- Goliath was talking about some new play with that name. A play called Macbeth yes. by some new writer. And then he says, ever read it? No, maybe we should. So the point he's trying to make is uh, he was just answering Lex's question semi-sarcastically because you know, it's A, it's Broadway and B, they're stuck in a cage. It didn't sound sarcastic to me. <laughs> Only semi-sarcastically <laughs> so maybe it was correct. You know, I, I, I did not hate this scene as much as I did before. But you do now. I do now. <laughs> Okay, so we cut back to Elisa, Hudson, and Brooklyn. Uh, they're going down a hallway, and Hudson's saying, like, Goliath isn't going to like this. And Elisa, I really like this line from Elisa. She says, he doesn't have to like it. He just has to realize he has no choice. <laughs> Which is like, damn! I love like, that. showing her dom I love this little, right like, now. mutiny posse she starts with Hudson and Broadway. I oh, like we forgot to talk about, um, like... Before, when like they were talking about like the uh, 
the the fact that they need to accept that they need like a new home and it's like um hudson agreed i remember i i remember like for some reason elisa got like really physically close to hudson like she held his oh hand and they kind of yeah okay i forgot about that too they, they like, kind of stared longingly right? they kind of stared longingly at each other weirdly. <laughs> they share a moment together they which like good for you, Elisa. Like get get every. She's dog very like physically com comfortable with all these men. It's like Snow White yeah. and the Seven Dwarves. All these rugged, I mean, stony faced that's men. An oddly accurate comparison. Um, yeah, I'm into it. Oh no. Um, but yeah, so the three of them are getting ready to leave. Um, but they can't leave the Grimorum Arcanorum in Xanatos' hands. So, like, that's their first stop, is to get the book. I, I love how when, like, Hudson looks at the cover of the book for a moment, like, the book is, like, almost animated looking, and it almost looks like a phallic shape is, like, appearing, and I'm just like, <laughs> is Hudson looking I... at a dick and wondering whether or not it's supposed to be a dick? I did not notice that. Maybe it's, like, reflecting, like, his inner desires. <laughs> Maybe it does that for everyone who looks at it. And so when Hudson looks at it, he sees a dick. <laughs> <laughs> desires. All the dicks he wants to suck. The desires to have them in him. Oh my god, yes, in him. In, <laughs> you know, in, in every part of him. Um, but so, there's this shot of Hudson opening the doors to the hall, and like, we pan down, we, like, he has a really nice back, and like, we see his like, full ass. Like, we go under and, like, his fucking loincloth. Like, we get like, yeah, we're like, looking at really the world from the point of tail. view of like, his, his, his asshole right now. <laughs> this is like a split second shot, but it's okay, we can talk about it for as if long it gets, If as... it got like, any more like, intimate, like, man. Um, so okay, so they go over to the book, and then Owen... Owen tries to stop them, which is really adorable. He, I love this scene. He walks up and he like holds his hand out in front of them. And he's yes, like, he's like, he's stop. just like, he's just like, talk to the hand, love. girlfriend. That is the yeah, that's the the pose he's doing. He's saying this book is the property of Mister Xanatos, and then Hudson's all, and who's going to stop us? You. And then Owen, he slowly takes his glasses off and puts them into his suit, and he says, indeed. And he fucking uh, kung fu's Hudson off his feet. I love this scene for Owen. I'm so happy for him. <laughs> and then he draws a goddamn gun on Broadway. Like, he's packing heat. Um, the scene's yeah, actually the insane. The, the, the way like, Broadway he sits, fucking he backs the gun up, gun in though. Broadway's, like, face. Yeah. Like, really aggressively. Yeah, especially considering mm. the circumstances of, like, last episode, too. Like, that's just yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. And the way Broadway Speaking of last episode, up. I don't think we even brought this up, but like I do like that Elisa is still in crutches in this episode. Yeah. After Deadly Force, because like she she was injured, so like she's still showing the result of that happening to her. Mm -hmm. So I just think that's neat. Um, but yeah, so Elisa saves the day though, because she she throws her crutches at Owen's wrist. <laughs> yeah. Like because she saves Broadway, because she and Broadway are tight. Um, yes. And then Broadway like throws Owen against the wall. He crushes the gun in his hands like a boss. I like how that That's scene awesome. is supposed to show that like like Owen is actually very um cod combat adept, but like at the same time he got beat up by a girl in crutches <laughs> and like <laughs> crutches are a dangerous weapon and don't let anyone convince you otherwise. I've like, never I I've never he, had he crutches. Three on one. Like he, he it showed that he could take on two guard gargoyles at once, which I think is amazing. He's a beautiful man. Yeah, but he gets his ass he gets his ass kicked in this scene. Yeah, he does. Well, the three of them sort of bully him. Um, well, because then, like, he tried to start shit with leave. them. They they bully the skinny little nerdy gay boy and leave. Good. <laughs> it's just like it's just like my childhood. <laughs> no, that's sad. <laughs> it's fine. Um, then we come okay. We come to like the single scene in this episode, which I actually remember from when I was a kid, which is Brooklyn and Lex are sitting in their cage, and Brooklyn just keeps like tapping the bars, which electrocute him each time, and he keeps saying like "ouch" each time, but he just keeps doing it. <laughs> Ouch. Oh Ouch. my god! And it keeps like, zzz, zzz. and Lex is like. How many times are we gonna try that? The, and Brooklyn's all like, "Until you figure out a way to get us out of this, like, really attitudey." 
<laughs> like, it's Lex's fault that he hasn't figured out a way for them to escape. Bro yet. Brooklyn is a fucking bitch. Like, like, Brooklyn's aware that he's a giant himbo and he's a fucking dumbass. But he's all like, he has so much attitude, though. <laughs> Um, would you like to hear my thoughts on this scene oh, and why no. Brooklyn is actually tapping the bars? Yeah. <laughs> I think he's awakening to his uh, his burgeoning <laughs> electroplay tank. I've, I've... And he, this is just his chance to like experiment. I mean, with that, with the sensation. It makes more sense than anything. It does make sense. It does. Okay, especially okay because wait wait because um. Lexington notices that the lights actually dim a little bit whenever Brooklyn touches the bars. And then Brooklyn responds, he says, Oh, sorry, no. I was too busy writhing and agony to notice. Like, you only talk like that, like, as a joke, He's if you're actually baby. kind of into it. But, okay. like, you're masking that with a joke, right? Mm-hmm. He's being a brat right now. He's being a subby little brat. He is being a he, brat. He's like, he, let's Next, next I you know, he's you... gonna start rubbing his butt cheeks up against oh the my bars. God. I was gonna say, like, he wants Let's, like, buy one of those, uh, like, bug zapper paddles and, like, spank him with it. That's what he wants Lex to do. But he can't just go out and tell him that. He has to act bratty uh, until Lexington, like, figures it out. Has, now that I'm thinking about it, it makes a lot of sense that he has an electricity kink. I feel like he's, like, only just figuring this out. Like, like we're watching him figure it out within this scene. Um, but anyway, so Lexington, like, he gets this bright idea that if they all just, like, rush the bars at once, they can drain the power. Um, just he sees that the lights are dimming every time he touches the bars. So he knows that there's, like, a limited amount of electricity. Um, and that one, when they do that, then Bront can get away. Um... I don't know why he decided that Bronx would be the one to get away, but, like, that's what they do. There's, like, a plot-implemented reason for both these men to electrocute themselves. Yeah, so they, they both grab onto the bars, and they're just grunting and screaming, and, like, writhing in agony, as Brooklyn said. Like, it's, it's kind of hot. I'm kind of into this part. Yeah, um, I can see why. <laughs> and Bronx just sort of, like, he just sort of looks at them for a minute, like, what are you doing? And then they're just like, go, Bronx! Go! Get out! Get help! And then he's like, oh, okay. So, like, Bronx, like, he also tackles his bars, but he's able to, like, break through, and, like, he's able to get out of the cage. Um, and then good boy Bronx just, just hoofs it out of there. Um, and then, so, we see Bronx leave the castle, and then Macbeth is watching Bronx leave the oh, security no. cameras, and he has this expression on his face yeah. that we can't... Not, okay, neither... Uh, myself or Hiron didn't interpret this expression no. or what it means. Um, do you do you know what? <laughs> Hold on, I need to show me the show me the expression. Okay, again. I I have it. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Loading. Yeah, no, that's the one that was like, I, like I saw that face he made. I was like, ew, what is that? Okay, like, it's like it's, it looks it's like a smile. It's a grimace. It's <laughs> it's both of them. It's confusion. It's somehow both a smile and a frown. Like he forgot how to smile, and instead of just like animating a normal fucking like mouth formation, they just like pushed like the middle part of his lips downward a little. And it looks I, really weird. I don't know if it's like an animation error with this studio or what. Like, okay, but, but I feel it, like he's he's either angry that Bronx is escaping, or he's pleased that Bronx is escaping. Does that mean it'll lure Goliath back? But like, I don't know which it is. I don't even know what his motivation is in this stupid. Episode. Yeah, yeah, no, he's kind of a fucking <laughs> idiot this whole episode. <laughs> so okay. Uh, <laughs> ba, ba, ba. So we see the life flying around. We actually did a really nice shirt, like shot of like up his skirt here, and we see his big muscles. These are some important things to point out every single time they happen. Um, and then like he's he's on a roof, and he oh, just hears God. a bunch of like car crashes happening. And yeah. He's like, oh my God. What is happening? And then he looks down, and you see Bronx like running down. This very busy New York City street. Uh, cars are swerving everywhere. Oh my god. Like, the Masquerade has been broken so many times. They're not even out of season one yet. 
Um, I don't know how, like, the gargoyle are not, like, common knowledge already by this point. Um, I actually counted this scene. There are six separate car accidents in, like, the ten seconds we see Bronx running down the street. Um, so just chaos, like, screaming. Um, and this is all all shot from a top-down angle, and it looks like the original Grand Theft Auto. Yes, it does. Or um, or or like Frogger. Or yeah, Frogger. no, like yeah. like, like we're, we're literally just like zoomed out and we're getting like an aerial view of like what happens, and it does look like Frogger. <laughs> so Goliath flies down. He gives like he gives Bronx a little cuddle before he's like, "Oh, where are the others?" And then Bronx like takes off, and Goliath follows. Meanwhile, like they are right in public. There's a giant crowd around them. We're all looking at them, and like freaking out. Um. I guess we're just lucky that, like, no one has phones in their cameras yet. Or, I mean, cameras in their phones yet. You know what I meant to say. No one has phones yet. Um, What's a phone? Goliath also completely destroys the roof of the taxi as he takes off. Which, like, thanks, Goliath. (laughs) That taxi driver is going to be delighted by what you just did. Imagine trying to get an insurance payout on your roof getting destroyed by a gargoyle. Oh my um, god. So, okay, so Goliath. Um, blah. So, Macbeth sees Goliath coming again on his security camera, and he gets another weird expression that I also <laughs> don't know how to interpret it. Hold on. Um, I don't think I stream capped this one. I don't know, did I? I, I might have. Let, uh, me, let me see. No, I didn't. Mm, I didn't either. I don't yeah, know, like, yeah, I, I just, I'm Macbeth, gonna say sexual frustration. Mac, Macbeth is, that. like, very, he's got such weird expressions this whole episode. Like, he's, like, we've just been introduced to him, and we know nothing about him. He's just this weird guy who, like, wants to hunt the gargoyles, and he makes, like, weird faces, and he's, like, and evil. It's such a shame, because, like, he's one of my all-time favorite bad guys in this show. Oh, I yeah, he's, he's great. He's characters ever. He's great, like, like every get, episode we, except this one. Like, we get so little, like, the, I feel like they're keeping their cards, like, too close to the vest, because we don't see like any of like Macbeth's real deal in this episode, it feels like. Or like yeah. not enough of it. Like it feels like they're they're holding too much back. Yeah. I mean we do get one big thing, but it's saved for like the very last Yeah, it's saved for like the end. So like before that, he's just like some weirdo with bagpipes <laughs> who has a lot of guns, I guess. <laughs> um but okay, so Goliath and Bronx like literally crash through the front door. Um, and Macbeth is just, like, there, and he says, don't bother knocking. After all, we're old friends. Which, this line makes no sense. I don't know why he says it. If it if yeah, it, it's, like it's, really, it's really fucking weird, because it's like, it they, li- they literally don't know each other. <laughs> um, but Goliath is all like, he sends Bronx to go get his boy. Oh, maybe it's because they're both old. Maybe, maybe but like Macbeth never knew Goliath back it, then. I don't know. Maybe it's because they both fuck the same woman. Like maybe, <laughs> but like, <laughs> I don't know. does Macbeth? I guess I guess Macbeth does know that. Yeah, because he knows who Goliath is. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't know. It's it's weird. Whatever. Um, but Macbeth, Macbeth is like super though. confident he's gonna win this fucking fight because he's all, all like, "I defeated you in your home. You think I wouldn't be ready for you in mine?" It's so then, funny because he's clearly not. We we see. Well, like he's he is. No, he's just, not. Look at what happens at the end of the episode. Okay, like he doesn't win the fight, but he is. His whole home fight. burns down. <laughs> Listen, that was part of his. Not plan. ready at all for them to come. Okay, okay, if, if Macbeth was Zantos, right? He's a If Macbeth was Zantos, he would say, as his castle burned down, he'd be like. All according to plan. <laughs> you know he would be. Yeah, I wish we had a moment like that, to be honest. Like, this was just like a decoy for his real castle, but we don't get that. Well, yeah, because he does have another castle. This is no. his decoy castle. <laughs> no, but he seems so easy. Like, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Here's the thing. Maybe this is just a movie studio, like, really a movie studio, and, like, if we panned around to the other side of the castle, we'd see it's all just backed it's up. It's just like, yeah, it. it's like that It's not an actual castle. That explains why he had all the, the lighting equipment and stuff in the basement. And it also explains how it burnt down when it's made of stone. It just burned to the ground. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay. But, but, okay. <laughs> like, it's, it's okay, shown. so there's... 
the rest of this episode, I don't even want to talk. Like, it's it's mostly just a really long action sequence. Um, Macbeth, Macbeth, like, he, like, capers down a hallway. And then he, like, a door closes behind him. And Goliath, like, roaring from the other side and clawing at it. Which, for some reason, he can't break through. <laughs> even though it's only a wooden door. No, but, like, it's um, so funny because we, in, like, the, the pack episode, we watch him break steel, like, 20 times. I know. And in this episode, we're gonna watch him, like, break through, like, 20 Like, he like, literally just bursts his fucking head through, the like, but, the steel like he's the Kool-Aid man. Yeah, this one door just And now he control, can't get through a wooden door? Through. Is he the alien um, from Signs? <laughs> I haven't watched that movie. It's so bad. <laughs> All I know is that they're allergic to water. And they can't open wooden doors. Really? I did not know that part. Well, that sounds like a good movie. I should check it out. <laughs> it's uh, but Goliath does eventually bash through it. And then, like, this big, like, electrified metal grate? blocks him in, like a fence thing. Um, so, like, Goliath gets to be electrocuted, too. Like, everyone gets to be electrocuted in this episode. Um, but then he shorts it out, because he, like, throws a nearby suit of armor into it, and, like, that, like, deactivates it. But Macbeth is behind him somehow, and this is really funny. He goes, ha, 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 ha. He kind of laughs <laughs> like the fucking, like, <laughs> Raul from the Phantom of the Opera animated movie. Oh my god. Like, it reminded me of Mandark from Dexter's Lab. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> it was a really awkward sounding lab. Yeah, it's like he didn't even like he could have like you know just like ran in there and like shot a net at him like he's about to do. But no, he just stands there, <laughs> he, he looks at him first. and laughs at him like a fucking well, asshole. Okay, because Macbeth, I feel like okay, Macbeth and Demona have that whole thing between I, themselves. Yeah, as we that's will learn true. much later on. So I feel like. Whenever Macbeth is with Goliath, he wants to like one up him. I I think there's like a big dick. there's like a bigger dick contest going exactly. on in Macbeth's so, like, head. Like, and he, it's e like he, he wants he to humiliate to the love rival. Stone. He wants to like yeah he wants to humiliate them. Uh -huh. Or as Goliath will say later about Thanatos, he doesn't want to destroy us. He wants to dominate us. Oh, like, this, Macbeth is just one more villain who wants to dominate the gargoyles. Which no wonder I like this show. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Macbeth does shoot like another one of those electrified nets at Goliath, but Goliath throws like a marble bust into it, which like prevents it from hitting him. Um, so then it's another chase scene. Um, there's another doorway closes like in between them. Goliath breaks through this doorway. Like, it feels like they're just burning up time. Um, we're in a feature of this brick room, which Goliath then figures out he also has to, like, crash through this wall, which he does. Um, and then there's a hall of mirrors behind it. Um, so I actually like this scene a lot. It's like, so how it's set up, how it's framed. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. It's so... I was just gonna say, it's so, like, elegantly put, just to, like, get destroyed at the end of the episode. Yeah, it's starting to get burned out. Although, like, why does Macbeth have a hall of mirrors in his castle? Again, it is a movie studio. <laughs> that does... Or, yeah. or he's like... Or it's like a carnival. My god, does yeah. Macbeth, Macbeth like have this... a... He's a carny. Imagine how many angles you would see if you, like, fuck someone in a hall of mirrors. Like, you would see, like, every angle of, like, everything. Yeah. I mean, Macbeth knows how many angles it would be. Yeah, like, you know, if you just, like, look at him in this screenshot, like, he looks like he knows, like, way too many angles to begin oh with. I think He's he... all like, with the mirrors, I can see right up your butthole right now, Goliath. Good lord. Goliath's like, god damn it, has everyone seen up my butthole by now? Yeah. Um, so, like, okay, so here they finally have a conversation about, like, who Macbeth even fucking is. <laughs> uh, this is probably, like, the best part of the episode, just because, like, like, we finally learn anything about him. Um, so, but Goliath's all like, like, why are you doing this? Did Xenatos pay you? And Macbeth says, I, I asked him for money. If I offered to do this for free, he'd have been suspicious. And Goliath's <laughs> like, well, we've done you no wrong. And Macbeth says, it's not you I'm after. You're just a pawn. I want your queen. I like how he <laughs> thinks, like, the gargoyles, like, even have queens. Queen, yeah, slay. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> when he knew Demona, she was the clan leader. Yeah, I mean, Demona is a queen. But Goliath says, queen, we have no queen. 
And Macbeth says, no, then what about Demona? And Goliath's like, you know Demona? Know her? I named her! I actually do like that line. Which is like, that's like the big reveal for this episode. And yeah, I like it too. Also I, another iconic Gargoyles line. This, yes. this episode has like three iconic lines in it. Like, the, you know, the voice actors put in the work. They always do a good job. Um, and then Goliath like falls through a trap door. Um, and he lands in like, I guess a medieval torture chamber that Macbeth also, you know, like he just has in his home. You know, when he needs to torture people. Um... <laughs> And Macbeth is also somehow um, down there too. I don't uh, know how okay, okay, there. okay. But like, I like when Goliath lands. His tits uh-huh. are literally animated. Like he's breathing in and out. Like he just like fell a long way and he hurt his head. And he's just like, you you you, you see he his like deep, bo- deep his, breaths. His boobs are like inflating and oh deflating. God. There, it's like hypnotic almost. It's very yeah, it's very I mean, brief. Just, but like, you can see like all the villains are obsessed with capturing him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Macbeth is down there. He, like, reveals his, like, master plan, which is if, if he captures Goliath and, like, the rest <laughs> of his clan, then Demona will come to free them, because it's Demona who he wants. <laughs> and then Goliath gives, like, this extremely evil-sounding cackle. Yeah, it's, it kind, so it's kind of weird. Like, it's really good, because, like, it was just, like, this very bitter laugh, because, like, I think, like, he's still feeling the sting of, like, what happened to him and Demona anyway. So now hearing that Macbeth is, like, trying to use him to get to her is, like, just, it's yeah. fucking funny to he's him. Like, he's like, you gotta be fucking kidding me at this point. Yeah, he's like, bro, we fucking hate her, and also, she would not save us. Like, you're an idiot. <laughs> um... Which I don't, like, I don't think it's true. Like, I think Demona would save them. But, like, De- one, Goliath does need to tell Macbeth that. And plus, I don't think Goliath is aware of that anyway. Um, yeah. Okay. Another fucking fight scene happens. Uh, let me see the highlights. Macbeth throws, like, a spiky table at Goliath, but he, like, deflects it with a tail whip. Um, there's lots of, like, swimming on medieval torture devices. Um, they, like, roll around on the floor with each other. It's it's one of those fights. Um, you could, like, play, like, the 70s, like, sex music over it, and it would yeah, pretty, pretty you much... Yeah, you get the... Bow, wow, wow. Yeah, that's what I was going for. I don't know what you were doing. I think I was going... I was doing Careless Whisper, which is probably 90s, now that I think about it. Something like that. Um... At some point, a fire starts. I think Macbeth accidentally sets his own castle on fire. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, it's stupid. Okay, this part is like... I think this part legitimately is badly laid out, because I had to watch it twice to even figure out what happened. <laughs> but Goliath is suddenly, like, alone in the fire, and he hears a noise, like, a weird-sounding noise, and he's like, what was that? And he sees, like, an Iron Maiden there, like, the torture device Iron Maiden. Jesus um, Christ. So he opens that up, and it makes, like, the same noise he just heard. And then, it, like, it's a secret passage out of the room. So Macbeth, like, used that to get away and leave Goliath to get burned alive, I guess. It just, it was very confusing to, like, actually watch. But I, hopefully I explained it. Yeah, you know, you did sense. a better job than the show did, I'd say. Um... And then we, as this is happening, we see Bronx run down to the dungeon, and he, like, slams into the cage that Lex and Brooklyn are in, um, and he just, like, electrifies it until, like, it breaks, and they can all get out. So, woohoo, that happens. What? Which, of course, he could have just done in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, they were kinda... telling him to leave and get help, so he did what they, he's a good dog, okay? He does what he's told. Um, okay, there's this, another fucking chase scene. Uh, Macbeth runs into a medieval armory, he picks up a sword, um, Goliath runs in after him, he picks up a mace, they're fighting, uh, the fire, like, spreads through where they are, so they're fighting in fire, like, again. Mm -hmm. I I think my problem is, like, so much of this episode just feels like it's burning up the clock, and I don't, uh, if it was better animated, I'd be way more into it, but because it's also badly animated... It's not, it's not very fun And, to like, watch. We, we keep getting, like, these weird instances of, like, goblin deformed Goliath. He just looks like... Yeah, I mean, like, he still has big muscles all He the time, looks really... Like, like I, I don't like how weird. they try to detail, like, his edges. <laughs> yeah. Like, he looks really ugly at some points, and I don't like it. 
So, like, eventually Goliath breaks Macbeth's sword with his mace. Uh, then Macbeth pulls out, like, a fucking gun, which Goliath then, like, crushes that, too. So, like, Goliath's doing pretty well. He, he lifts up Macbeth by his coat, and he's all like, Oh, I like I'm this gonna part. I'm gonna fucking murder you. Yeah, this part's funny. So Macbeth, like, slips down out of his coat and, like, gives Goliath holding it. And he's just, like, I mean, wearing a jumpsuit after that. Well, I like... he's wearing, like, a skin-tight, like, spandex bodysuit or Under something. It's so fun. What if, like, okay, okay, but listen, hear me out. What if he were naked under that trench coat and he just, like, <laughs> slipped out and ran away completely naked? Just, that's how he had that's to that's why escape. they had to send this episode back? Because that's how they drew it the first time? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, now that you say they, that. They have to have a five week delay to redraw naked Macbeth. <laughs> I just. I, I, yeah. I, I, like, I, like, I like how that would like add on to the humiliation factor. His home got destroyed, he got fucked over, yeah, and now and he has to like. He's fucking like, stripped to his birthday suit. So, yeah, I just. Yes, yes. Um. <laughs> I, I do think it's hot, though, the fact that he has to like take off clothes to like not, you know, escape the fight. Yeah, like, I do stuff like that, like, in, in my stories a lot of the times, too. Like, yeah. I, I think it's hot, also, yeah. just the removal. I'm not saying um, I would fuck Macbeth, but why the fuck would I not fuck Macbeth? I would fuck Macbeth. Yeah. Macbeth is hot. And, Macbeth like, you sort hot. of see his ass, too, when he drops the drown. He, do, he does kind um, of, like, have that dad ass going, you know? Yeah, like, he's he's a dilf. He's just one of Gargoyle's many, many fuckable dilfs. It, I, um... I, 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 I kind of, you know, I kind of like how he kind of looks like a much more groomed variant of Wolf, because they oh both... My, you only like... Okay, you... <laughs> any guy you're attracted to, you somehow bring to him that, like, he's a version of Wolf, and that's why you think he's hot. <laughs> I don't even remember what we were doing. Okay, <laughs> we yeah, Macbeth is running away naked. Okay, right. <laughs> um, and then, like, Goliath is left holding his big trench coat, which he then, like, rips apart. Uh, because Goliath's very dramatic and extra. He killed the blazer. <laughs> yeah, so he, he's gonna follow Macbeth again, but then Brooklyn lets, like, call out to him, so he goes over to them instead. Like, thank God, there's no more chasing in this Such goddamn a, episode. I feel like, I looked at my notes, and my, that entire chase sequence... That fills out the like the last third of the episode. I had like two notes for it. Just what are you gonna fucking say about it? When, yeah. when the entire first half of the episode, I'm just like line by line. I've got all these things I want to say, and then there's this J sequence. It's like there's nothing to talk about because it's not. A good it's just sequence. like an action sequence for the sake of having an action sequence, and it's not like, even. Like I a really like, like the mirror scene, but the rest of it is just. Scene, I mean, okay, this it was very ambitious though. Like all the fights that the live and Mitch were having, like in the fires, like the sword and the yeah, mace, like yeah, I, I, it was. It the sword in the cool. maze is stupid, though. Like it's it's, just, it's, just a it's it, they're, they're like they're literally sword fighting, but he's not. He doesn't have a sword. He has a mace. All Macbeth has to do is cut off the handle. That's not how a mace works. <laughs> but it's a wooden works. handle. <laughs> but you can't just cut through a wooden. Uh, uh, do you, <laughs> do you know how a sword works? Listen, I don't cut wood a lot. I, okay, as someone who has <laughs> cut wood a lot, you cannot cut through wood okay, that thick in a single block. Okay, fine. All right, all right, all right. I, the I, point I, is, I didn't pass my science weird, class. It was a lawn fight scene. Just more wilderness survival class, but still. And there Whatever. wasn't enough, like, there wasn't enough in the fight scene to make it interesting to watch for a prolonged period. So, anyways, but, okay. they're outside the so castle. So we see the, the entire castle burning down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and like, we get this company, shot of, like, multiple towers just, like, on fire, and the whole like, sky yeah, is like red. crumbling in flames. It's, and it all, it's all stone that's burning. Where so did the fire even come from? It came from Macbeth. Macbeth, like, set it with his torch, uh, <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> back in the torture chamber that he had to lie in. So, my God. There wasn't a, the yeah, in the room, there was nothing burnable in it, really. My, so my god, like this guy literally had like his own headquarters. It was paper mache <laughs> sewn that the castle was made. His of. weakness is setting a fire in his torture chamber. Um, <laughs> Beth is probably pissed too. Does he have a lot of? No, he literally is castle. shaking his fist as he's wanted, run, going away yeah. in his hover car. He's like, "Oh, I'll get you next time, God!" Like he had this awesome stained glass window. We'll that is meet now again, Spider Man. To be fair, we don't witness that glass, stained glass window getting destroyed. Which it's is like destroyed. A, I know, but I'm just saying, it's a rarity in a cartoon 
for a stained glass window to be shown and not I being know. shown on screen as being destroyed. As people, they love to animate those windows <laughs> being destroyed, which makes me sad like every single time it happens. <laughs> um, okay, but so the Goliath and everybody, they just fly home. They're like, well, that was a weird thing that happened. Uh, let's go home now. <laughs> then on their way to their castle, they hear a cry from a nearby rooftop, and it's Broadway, uh, along with Hudson and Elisa. And Goliath is super fucking pissed at them because they're not guarding the castle like he told them to. And Elisa, like, takes the brunt of his anger because she's all like, you don't live at that castle anymore. Like, it isn't your home. Shut up. And he's, he has this really funny line. He's like, how dare you? Yeah, he's so, like, and... angry and dramatic for, like, no he's reason. He's extremely dramatic. He's so extra. And then Broadway actually gets, like, way up in his face. Ooh. And he's like, no, Goliath, she's right. It's suicide to stay there. I do love and, like, that. Like, there's so many emotions happening. Uh, so then Hudson... Uh, like, he just to be, like, sort of, like, the cooler head prevailing. He's like, they are right, Goliath. The castle is just a place of stone and wood. Uh, home is more than that. Home is the sixth of us. Wherever we can be together and safe. Oh my god, That's okay, but, home. like, when they, like, when he says that, they're all grouped next to each other, and I almost passed out laughing at the screenshot, because Hudson's <laughs> face is... This little group shot of them Hudson's all face is, like, the only normal-looking one there, and then everyone else has just got this dopey fucking smile. Elisa looks like Michael Jackson for some reason. She, she looks really off my Oh my god. Like, I like, yeah, I like Lexington looks fucking... Lexington is, like, on crack. But he's really happy. Everyone's very happy. <laughs> and okay, when he says the six of us, is that including Bronx, or is it including Elisa? It's, How is he counting these six people? He's including I'm, Bronx and Elisa and Goliath. That would be seven, though. Uh, okay, everyone except Goliath. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. He's talking to Goliath. <laughs> Um, okay, so Goliath finally is, like, after he, like, flexes a bunch of times, you know how angry he is, and his pecs get really big, um, he's like, okay, but I'm going to do something first. So he, he flies back to Castle Wyvern, and then where just, we see Owen, he Owen's jerks, on his knees. He jerks off all... <laughs> he basically gives Owen a facial here. Okay, so Owen's on his knees, he's sweeping up the glass... From the last fucking gargoyle encounter we had, where they shattered the, the case around the Grimorum Arcanorum, and Delight stomps in, he's all like, I have a message for your master, while like, th basically thrusting his bulge, like, directly into Owen's face. And then he says, We're I have a message for your back. master, and then he gives, we'll he, 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 he's just like, blow, getting a blowjob from Owen, and he's oh like, yeah, tell, tell him that. Tell him that. <laughs> Tell him this this hot, frothy cream right into his throat. <laughs> and, so, and so Owen is all like, I will deliver your message. And he just goes back to his sweeping. As Goliath like stomps back out. Yeah. So like, okay, like that was that was no, that was Goliath, that was like so weirdo. stupid. <laughs> uh but then the following day we see Xanatos arriving at the castle. Um, and Owen greets him like his little boy toy that he is, and he's all like, Welcome home, Mrs. Anatos. I'm sorry to tell you that the Gromorum is gone, as are the gargoyles. However, I think you'll find this interesting. And he hands him- okay, watching this the first time, I thought this was like a mobile VHS player, which I thought was really weird looking, but on review, mm -hmm. Hiran told me, it's actually like, what is it? It's a, um, it's a mini tape, the type they used in camcorders back in the 90s. Yeah, so like, I had never seen this thing before, but I guess they are a real thing that existed, especially for a rich person like Xanatos. I like the how they have like robots, and then they need like camcorder players to watch video. <laughs> I guess that was common back then, but like, Xanatos is like a billionaire. Yeah, so, like, so Xanatos like watches the fight that Macbeth had had, like, uh, and it's like not even like he's not even the like gargoyles. watching the whole fight. He watches like one clip where like he watches like a <laughs> clip of it, and he's like, okay, well, like that's kind of hot, but I don't really care. All it's that like much. what he says is like it seems there's a new player in the game, and you're just like, oh yeah. no, they're gonna work it's together, like, and it's like they okay. never do. I think he sees Macbeth more as like a rival. I don't, we we don't know enough to find out. 
Yeah, they're like they're not really that many episodes together. It's just pointless. No. There was no um, point to that scene. But like, then, the only other episode I can think of that they're in together technically is Future Tense, and well, that's not even can well, It is. It, it, it's very canon. No. Okay. No. So okay, the last scene of the episode, um, we go to the gargoyles' new home. For the rest of the series, and it's the clock tower, which we have seen before, uh, which is on top of the police station where Elisa works. So, to me, this is like a significant downgrade because there's nothing cooler than a castle on top of a skyscraper. But like, yeah. the clock tower is okay. I, guess. I I think it's cool because like now Elisa is she doesn't have to like go all the way to fucking Xanatos's house to visit yeah. It must be easier on her. That's probably why she suggested it that she can mm. visit them easier. Um, and Lex is saying, like, how, like, maybe he can get the clock working I like how, again, like, I guess the clock doesn't even work anymore. I like how, like, uh, how, as the episodes go on, she's, like, looking for a home for them. She's like, I think I found the perfect place. And it's just like, you work there. <laughs> you work there, yeah. You didn't have and, to like, look very far. It's also weird to me, because, like, <laughs> it's on top of the police station. So you think that people would go up there once in a while? I guess they don't, because I don't think that ever happens. No. Time. Uh, there's one time that someone brings something up there, and yeah. that's uh, Matt. Oh well, f- fucking Matt. fuck Matt. I don't but even like, think about it. Basically, right now. from when they when the actual police do discuss it up there, they're like, "Yeah, there's nothing up there. It's just empty." <laughs> yeah. Um, Which, having worked in several office buildings, I will say it's not that unusual to have a part of the building that literally no one enters because there's no Aren't they going to hear the gargoyles, like, tromping around up there with their big, heavy feet? I well, guess not. I, I don't if know. there's, like, several floors between them and yeah. the police, then no, they won't. Well, it sounds like the perfect and, home, then. And Elisa's saying, like, you know, it's a fixer-upper, but a few throw rugs and flowers it could be home. And then Goliath says, yes, as long as we're together... It's home. And that's how the episode ends on a very cute little, you know, family note for them. Uh so yeah, what did you guys think of Enter Macbeth? It was it was very funny. I was I I like I there were several moments I almost passed out laughing at the circumstances. Like, I definitely got chuckles out of a lot of it, especially whenever Owen was around. I just really he's, like he's I really like the I like the pause frames of like Macbeth looking like insane and <laughs> Deformed, and I like um, just the pause frames of uh, Goblin Goliath, and then his abs. God, I hate no, like it's his it's because like they don't sculpted abs because it's like they're animating like his body going up at a close angle, so it's like they they're like oh his belly is here. Uh, how do we present animating him flying with his belly there? And they're like oh well, I mean I guess just like draw abs. And you see, like, cum like, cutters on his abs, too. Like, they drew that... They took special care to draw it, but, like, only for that one shot. Yes. I I, mean, I enjoyed the episode up until Goliath went into the castle. Yeah. yeah. And that's when I started, like, tuning out, basically, up until we got like, to the mirror scene. Nothing really happened. Because if you just cut out everything between him entering the castle and the mirror scene... You have lost nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I, I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I thought, okay, like, when I watched it, like, with, um, in the Discord group with you and others, like, a couple of years ago, um, ago. we, like, we, we hated it, I remember. Like, we were just trashing on it. Like, the animation looked, like, significantly worse than last episode. But I think yeah, it's just... Because, like, every episode up until now has looked, like, so fucking good. This is, like, the first badly animated one. I think show. it's because, like, there's been, like, um, a passage of time since you and I last watched, like, the last episode. And now mm-hmm. we're on this episode. And I we, we forgot, we forgot yeah, about... Like... I think we forgot about the trauma. Yeah, like, if we watched them, like... If we watched Deadly Force and then this one, like, back-to-back, we would have, like, much more easily seen, like, how much worse this yeah. episode looks compared to the other ones. Yeah, but, like, uh, on it, on yeah. its own, it's just, like, a very silly, like, action-y episode. Like, it, it you know, like, even though plots are progressed, we do meet Macbeth, even if we don't know a whole lot about him yet. Um, but, like, the whole Xanatos thing, like, them finding... 
uh, their new home in the clock tower, like all that's important. Like that's I, I feel like resolved. all the exposition for both Macbeth's introduction and them going to the clock tower is, um, I think it's a little rushed. Uh, the writing regarding that. Um, yeah, I, I feel like yeah, that could have been like five minutes of like actual important content. Like episode. I feel like there's a much more, a much more. Um, intricate way they could have done it i don't know i don't know but they did have Maybe. to like send this episode back for like re-edits like you said so i don't know yeah it's just Macbeth was, was naked well, for so much of it i i feel like if they just you know cut some of that fight scene and put it into dealing with all the, cr- the numerous subplots going mm-hmm. on in this episode they could have had a longer like bully scene where they're all like just getting all up on owen and like taking turns slapping around. yeah yeah that was pretty funny <laughs> Why would you rate this episode? Um, this is gonna be our first low rating. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have to say, uh, I don't know. Like, a lot of things were entertaining, but it doesn't really, uh, support the shoddiness of it all. Um, I'd gotta say, like, maybe three to two and a half loincloths. Oh, that's actually, I'm surprised it's that high, actually. Tell me what you guys think. Well... I was also to give it a two. Yeah, I have, I have I have two written down. I'm saving my one rating for like the real clunkers in season yeah. two. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm, I'm not I, like I'm rating it like a halfway like, mark. I would say like two, like maybe like two point five, like maybe. Yeah, yeah like, like if I'm in a good mood. Like two point five is like the halfway <laughs> mark, like a five out of ten, and I'm just like, it is just like. You know, we've gotten so much gold, and this comes up, and I think it's excusable because it's the first bad episode, which is why I'm not going, oh, yeah. you know, like, any lower. Um, did you have... Any uh, horny moments? The horniest moment? Yes, did you have any thoughts on what the horniest moment I have a couple have options, and I feel like they're going to be different than yours. Oh, okay, good. Controversy. <laughs> Listen, okay. Um, I like the scene where <laughs> Goliath falls onto the ground and you see his pecs, like, moving. Oh my god, I didn't even notice that part. Yeah, I know you didn't. But, but you, I like, didn't. have completely fixated upon it. Look, I've been really into just pecs lately. I don't know why. That's true, you have We've, been. Yeah, there's been a few messages like that. <laughs> I, like, just like I, and there's that, and I also like when Macbeth is, like, he sneaks out of Goliath's thing. Like, he takes off his trench coat. That's so funny. Because it's not, like, not even horny. But I, I like liked it. Turned on I fixated it anyway. on it. I'm just like, yeah, that's something. Imagine, okay, if the, like, if the fight had just gone on longer, I know that's like, sounds painful, but, like, just Goliath kept picking Macbeth up, and Macbeth just, like, kept leaving more and more clothes behind. Like, the longer <laughs> That'd be the fight so went That could have been... That would have kept my attention. Yeah. They should have done that instead of the... <laughs> fucking 18 chase scenes that they had. Yeah. That would have been much better. <laughs> but, yeah, those um, are those are my... I think I'm leaning okay. towards the second one more, though. For me, it's either when Macbeth was, like, kidnapping everyone and, like, putting nets on everybody. Just because, like, I have a thing for kidnapping. I do, too. Um, or the part where Brooklyn and Lex are in the cage... And they're like experimenting with electro play. Yeah, you did. Know, you did like that a lot. That horny. Like I did. Like I just like that Brooklyn even like had this extremely self-aware line where he like I feel like he he kink shamed like Greg Weissman and all the writers, calling it like writhing in agony. Yeah. Like, cause he cause he knows that they're all into it. Oh, absolutely. No, I. this I is know. definitely a, a feeder episode for people with, like, shocking or electricity kinks. Yeah. Um, either that or, like, the lives extremely detailed abs. I, I didn't know you liked that. I didn't, but I feel like the animators were horny when they drew Yeah, them. that's true. But I don't know. I mean, like, I wasn't it makes, into it, but I think that they It were. makes them horny, but doesn't make <laughs> me the viewer who is, uh, horny. It just sort of freaked us out. <laughs> yeah, it, it freaked us <laughs> It was weird. Did you have any thoughts on horniest moment? I mean, none of it made me horny, but, like, 
I will say when we were watching the one, the only moment I specifically called out for being horny mm-hmm. was when they were in the cages. Yeah. So the shocking thing again, or yeah, out, out. Well, like even going into the episode, uh, I'm like, okay, well, I know one horny yeah, moment like that, that will we, exist. We That's all remember that part, yeah, as, okay. like from when we watched as kids. I don't know why. I kind of, I kind of didn't. I don't know. I'm very like whatever with like electricity stuff. I don't like it. I just remembered uh, yeah, that particular I just scene it for some reason. Uh, um, okay, gayest character. Who is it? Uh, Macbeth. Yeah, I guess Macbeth. He's just like in a big dick competition with Goliath the whole episode. He definitely is. Owen's definitely all. Like Owen's measured. also pretty gay though. Yeah, Owen was my second pick because he's just gay. No he's what, watching so. the gargoyles on the cameras, and then he takes a facial yeah, for Goliath like and gives a message. At them. <laughs> he just goes. He goes to visit Xanatos when he's home from prison. Hey, so Goliath had a message for you, sir, and he's just like, "Oh, what was it?" Yeah, and he just like, regurgitates all the jizz into. That's not what I was gonna say. <laughs> Oh, so what were you gonna say? It's like a fucking bird. <laughs> what the hell? And then, and then, like Xana does, like I see, exquisite. Could use just like mom used to make. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, my face. Oh, I'm sweating. Okay. <laughs> That was so funny. What the fuck? I was I was just gonna say like he blows Xanatos just to send the message, but like oh, then you that That's what sense. I thought you were gonna say! I, then, and then, then he said what he did and I'm like what? He, just, he just feeds Xanatos like he's a bird and he like just regurgitates <laughs> Yeah, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> he said he delivered the message. I, I don't know. Okay. okay, my stomach hurts. My stomach hurts. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, give me a second. Alright, alright, alright. I just gotta think of a future kind of tense episode and I'll, I'll get sad enough to just be normal again. Okay. <laughs> Okay. 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 So, right. gayest character Macbeth. We got that yeah, right. I Macbeth, because he's he's kidnapping. Literally took his gargoyles. Took he's, his he's trench coat off in front of Goliath. And, yeah, he's stripping. Be like, you like what do you see, big daddy? And Goliath's all like, no. The, and then they're yeah, fighting. More. Oh my god! There's like there's like this like <laughs> club music, but it's all bagpipes playing. Yes. Not to mention we get to see all of his kinky <clears throat> torture devices. We do. Yeah, no, Macbeth is he's 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 got some he's got like a thing or two going on, you know what I'm saying? I do. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. We have we have so many emails to read. Okay, hey, yeah. You want me to read those or something? Yeah, would you... There's there's four totals. I don't know if you guys want to split it up. Um, I have them all written down on their own separate little notepad file if you want to send, if you want me to send them to you, Sid. I thought that would be easier. Um, you can just read them. The email. Okay. Alright. Or I, I can, can read, read the first one. <laughs> okay. Okay, so correction. We have three emails to read. Alright. Well, assuming we don't cut that entire section, but who knows? Uh, I uh, will. Yes, please do. <laughs> please. Anyways, I will read the first one. Okay. From friend of the podcast Rembrandt, a.k.a. That Snarky Remy. Yes, who has mailed us many times before. He's our favorite mailer. Yes, we like Remy. Uh, hey there, Lone Cloth Hour duo. Happy to write again. And thank you both for continuing to make such a fun podcast. Sorry if this mail goes rather long, just me playing catch-up on these trio episodes. The episode, The Thrill of the Hunt. I knew it would be longer, but I didn't know you'd go for so long. So much (laughs) to discuss, and all of it's so much fun. Especially all the wolf and dingo thirsting, and all the praise for Fox. I also seek a bit of info, and it's official that Jackal and Hyena, confirmed as, respectively, a sociopath and psychopath, 
don't have an incestuous relationship because Jackal isn't Hyena's type. Which oh, I don't think that's true. I think they are definitely bonus. Oh, that's that's interesting. Sorry, okay, great. I disagree. Okay, <laughs> no, but that makes sense though because like I could see like Jackal maybe for Hyena, but like Hyena's into like robots and like you know yeah. other kinds. Okay, of... but he like becomes a robot later on. Yeah. Well... So do you think do you think when he does that 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 like that's the first time she was interested in her own brother? It's a weird conversation. <laughs> listen, listen, I don't know. I don't know. But that's that's an interesting information, regardless. Okay. Which, okay, but honestly, the less time thinking of Creeper Jackal, the better. At least Hyena is amusing, being bat poo insane. Then comes Temptation. I agree with Croup. I understand why this would be the episode that made so many Gargoyles fans put Brooklyn on a pedestal. Mm. But not me. Even as a kid first watching the show, I found Brooklyn's stupidity in these early episodes to be annoying. Especially my, in this episode. Damn. My man. I fucking... I, I, I'm, I'm on the same page as Remy Brooklyn for a lot of hate squad. Brooklyn hates Even what? The, Brooklyn hates squad. It's oh. Right now. Except for me. Uh, even though Demona was manipulative and made compelling <laughs> arguments, Brooklyn was deceived way too easily by someone who... Wanting to cast a spell on his leader. He did it because he's a simp. Yeah, he's a horny boy. Someone who tried to kill them not long before this. Plus, <laughs> this also is trying to interact with the clearly gay bikers. <laughs> despite knowing humans in that day and age don't know of Gargoyles, and especially after the fiasco of his idiotically trying to hail a taxi. Oh, that cute funny scene. I mean, I feel like the taxi one wasn't that stupid. It's not like he knew any better at that point. Yo, taxi! Um, this episode was just one of the stepping stones on Brooklyn becoming one of the good guys in the show that I actively disliked. However, I loved how Elisa beat the magic spell simply by using a loophole. Just like how Xanatos woke the gargoyles up. I mean, Xanatos didn't really use a loophole. Just... I mean, I guess. Well, because they they I literally know. fulfilled the spell. Like, uh, he just took it very magic literally. Magic is so weird in this show. Uh, anyways, it was a great display of how smart she can be. Yes. On the other hand, this episode smart cemented how awesome and smart Lexington is and was a big reason he was my favorite gargoyle when I was a child. As per the timeline, the Gargoyles woke up from their millennium slumber on October 4th, 1994. Oh, so it's the end of October now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we just did. So we have, like, yeah, a timeline. Yeah, I think he, um, Xanatos was only arrested for, like, two or three weeks. Mm. Wait, but now he's, oh, now he's saying other things in this next sentence. Then the trio found the motorcycle on November 7th. Lexington finished it for Brooklyn to ride on November 11th. What? But then, but the, but we saw the October. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I don't know where Remy dot even got these dates from. I don't know. Something. We have to construct our own timeline for this to make sense. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> anyways, the, uh, they've been awake a little over a month, and Lex already knows how to fix and modify a broken down motorcycle in just a few nights. I adore this web wing genius. I do too. Lex is the best. Mm -hmm. Um. Did you guys end up discussing the fact that? That episode, like, the whole motorcycle thing was demanded by the network for them to sell toys. Yeah, and then they destroy the yeah. motorcycle, like, in that episode. <laughs> like, like, as a take that to yeah. the toy producers. Like, like, it sort of sucks, because I want more Gargoyles toys, like, to have for me. Like, they yeah. literally just shoot the gas there. tank on the motorcycle, and then it just, like, erupts. <laughs> uh, Alright, finally... And as for Deadly Force, I'll keep it short. Just how I enjoyed this episode <coughs> displaying Broadway's night Evite and how it's instrumental for his growth afterwards. Not such a well done way of showing the dangers of improper gun use on a cartoon. Plus, there's also Goliath's badass rampage while tearing through the villains. Mm -hmm. the, sa the sad part is how this episode showed that Broadway's voice actor has some good acting chops, yet nowadays people only ever think of him as that damn Patrick. From that damn SpongeBob oh cartoon. God, I'm right there with you. Right yeah, it's yes. kind of, I I agree completely. I think like <laughs> I think like while he still has his range, like in its shows, even with like the newer SpongeBob episodes, um, he's always going to be remembered um, just for that character. 
She's like how they only think of Clancy Brown as Mr. Krabs. It's oh criminal, my god. <laughs> I can't believe I want to fuck Mr. Krabs. <laughs> yeah. You do. Anyway, I've rambled enough. Thanks again for this fun podcast, and I'm very much looking forward to your thoughts on Macbeth and how the show just keeps delivering on the hot oh older God. men. There's so many. Yeah, there's a lot. Okay. I want to, like, lick Macbeth's eyebrows. I want to... I don't know what I want to do to him. I want to paddle him, probably. Yeah, right? I was going to say. Like, most of the characters. Yeah. Do you want to keep going? Do you want to do your voice a break? I can keep going. Okay. I'll let you guys react as I write off the emails. So, next one is from Vin. It's his first time emailing us. Ooh, okay. interesting. Hi, Sid. Hi, Croup. My name is Vin. I'm very new to watching Gargoyles, as in I literally started watching it only after I started listening to your podcast. Your Ooh. jokes and commentary on the first three parts of Awakening made me want to actually see the things you were talking about for myself, and I'm really enjoying it so far. Yeah. I don't know if you'll see this before you record episode 8, but I tell you I was not ready for what it had in store. I knew oh. that it was going to focus on Broadway, because the previous two episodes were focus episodes for the other members of the trio. But how absolutely straight to the point and uncensored it was, it's amazing how the character whose only personality up to that point was eating got one of the heaviest topics. I know. I, it's like so... Uh-huh. I, I, I honestly love the direction they took for Broadway's like character arc. And like he was the perfect character to use for that. To sort of like yes. show that like e- yeah, like even the dumb comedy characters, like there's more to like everyone. I don't on think the show. I don't think it would be as impactful if they use like someone else. And I think that's yeah, another thing that makes yeah. Broadway so unique. Mm-hmm. His grief over Elisa was so painful to watch, and him telling the truth to Goliath made me tear up the way he folded his wings around him and made himself look smaller. I literally mm-hmm. just sat out of my chair for a minute after the episode ended just to soak it all in. Uh, yeah, no, it's a heavy one, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Especially if you go in, like, without knowing the context. Like, I basically had the same reaction. <sighs> like, as an adult watching. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Now, you might get real mad at me, but it must be said, Broadway sounds like Patrick oh, Starr. Oh, no! no! Oh no! <laughs> Not all the time, oh. mind you, but there are times. For instance, oh, you poor innocent. <laughs> oh, Ben doesn't know. You <laughs> poor oh. innocent soul. <laughs> yeah, it's because he is Patrick Star. Yeah, the same voice actor. <laughs> How the mighty have fallen. <laughs> for instance, when he confronted that mugger in the park, the only thing I could hear was Patrick. Yeah. I'm not taking criticism on this. I'm right. Okay. You are right, then. You you literally are right. No, <laughs> oh my God. It's no. It's because it's like I kind of get that same thing when I'm watching that episode. Just like the surrealness that you know. This is also the voice of like an iconic character that I kind of knew for a majority of my life. Um, yeah, he's been just like since the beginning, really, as a friend. Yes. <laughs> okay. Also, a question. Sid has hinted at his dislike of season three, and I did read somewhere <laughs> that even the people who made the show were not happy with it. Mm-hmm. Should I still watch it all the way through? And if so, what should I be prepared for? Uh, <laughs> so, so can I? I'm going to start with just saying this: there are technically two separate season threes. Mm. Because there is the animated season three, but after, at the end of season two, there's all and made way after season three, there's a comic that picks up and just ignores <clears throat> season three from being canon and just continues the story. Yeah, so, I okay, mean, some, I, 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 I do like the comic better. Yeah, to give some historical perspective, Greg Weissman, the creator of Gargoyles, um, he, he made the first episode of season three, and then he, he left the show afterwards. So, like... I sort of see his vision as being the canonical gargoyle. So, like, the first episode of season three is part of the canon. Yeah. And when he goes back and does the comic series, he incorporates that episode as the first two issues of the comics. And then goes from there. Yeah, Um, yeah. I mean, I think season three of the cartoon, like, you can watch it if you're really thirsty for more gargoyles content. Um, It's pretty much universally agreed it's 
bad. <laughs> yeah, but I like, mean, if you really so, want okay. more, like if you can watch it as like a sort of like what if the thing. Sort of thing. The like, thing I, I have a problem with regarding season three is, um, well, I mean, you know, everything that Creep just said, you know, in the background, there was that whole, uh, dynamic change in the studio, therefore, there was a whole dynamic change with the show, and it just felt so different, and not in a good way, either, like, the dynamic changed, but nothing really gradually improved from that point on, there was really no, um, f good forward point for, that the studio had, um, that they decided to pick up on like i don't know it just it it just doesn't feel um like the same show is pretty much i guess my complaint another thing to keep in mind is that the show the first two seasons make up 65 episodes mm -hmm. um the canon episode from season three that's 66 there's only 12 more episodes that were made yeah so even though it's one third of the show it's only a very small chunk of the show that people yeah. book into their non-ganon. Do you guys mm -hmm. want to know a secret? What? Yeah. I actually have never watched season three. Oh. Really? But Sid, you haven't seen, read the comics, so... I've read okay. Did you, read did you at least watch. see the episode where they, like, had they had, like, Goliath, like, actually in a court trial and he had to talk to a lawyer? No, but that sounds amazing. I'm like, maybe we should watch and, season and three. And then they... <laughs> Didn't they have, like, Lexington on, like, a spin wheel and, like, humans were, like, throwing, like, rotten fruit at him? That yeah. was Hunchback of Notre Dame. Wait, they do that on Gargoyles, They too? do that on Gargoyles in I season don't want... three. No! Yeah, yeah. So, the thing about season three is Greg Wiseman's talked about it, <laughs> and the writers had a ton of great ideas, and he loved the ideas they came up with. Mm -hmm. It was the execution that was... <laughs> Yeah. yeah I mean, so so right, so like, he's essentially kind of saying stuff that happened from that. He's well, essentially like, he, saying A for effort. Well, like, <laughs> he, uh, yeah. he's mentioned he's uh, slight spoilers. He's a huge fan of the episode about um, uh, Hudson possibly losing his sight. Oh, uh, worrying about the going future tense. Yeah, and worrying about possibly going blind. Oh, oh in the you future. said Hudson. Yeah, Hudson. Oh, uh, Hudson. Not Hudson. Broadway. Sorry. Hudson. Oh, see, that would, that would be a really good episode for Hudson. And um, it's, it's yeah, also would... interesting because um, Broadway was blind in Future Tense, and Hudson going blind, that, that's, like, almost genetic. Oh, wait, why was Broadway blind in Maybe. Future Tense? Didn't you, like... Uh, I think his eyes were literally gouged out. Yeah. Okay, uh, never mind, never mind. I'm gonna take a few steps back. <laughs> no, that's not genetic at all. That doesn't happen to every... <laughs> <laughs> um... But yes, there's that. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's episodes that are, were on the other ed ed edge of the spectrum. I'm just going to bring up A Bronx Tale. Oh, uh, I remember that it's one. That sounds great. It's an entire episode about Bronx with none of the other gargoyles in it. Oh, like in Avatar The Last Airbender, the one about Appa? Yeah, except... That, yeah. Like, and the other one, Momo? Momo. Momo. <laughs> yeah, except uh, that um, unlike in Avatar, where the Appa had been through a ton of very interesting things... Like, poor Bronx never really gets to do anything. No, <laughs> no. no. but they tried to make a focus episode for him, and it did well, not I mean, go I'm well. Sorry, I'm glad they're at least giving him any spotlight at all, which is more than Greg Weissman ever did for the. Yeah, film he's now. literally just a mascot <laughs> in like every scene he's in. Yeah. Um. So, like, there's a ton of great ideas and a lot of like little I things that, that uh, you could definitely pull from, but like as a whole. There's a reason that, like, all continuations from then on are going to right. ignore that. So, like, season. yeah. You can watch it if you're a completionist, but, like, treat it more as a what if than as, like, a canon thing. That said, I do recommend checking out the comics. The comics are excellent. Yeah. yeah. Once, you, once you get through season two, I would definitely recommend it. Just, yeah, uh, don't try, the comics. don't try and find physical copies of them because they run you hundreds of dollars if you try yeah. and get them out. Um. um they only did one printing in, like, the early 2000s. Uh, we, we spent, like, a lot of time just now talking about our thoughts on Season 3. Yeah, well, uh, you know, we, we didn't even we finish this email. We asked a question. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm just, like, pointing it out as well. <laughs> Anyways, uh, also, one thing. This podcast is really quiet. Like, I have the volume on my phone at max when listening, and sometimes I have trouble hearing the audio. I don't know if that's something that can be fixed, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Yeah, Thank I could... for reading my... Oh. I, I was just going to say I could probably fix that. Okay. We can adjust that for you, Vin. 
And uh, thank you for reading my message. Apologies if it's just a block of text, but when I get the opportunity to talk about things I like, I tend to gush a lot. Again, great I'm the work same on way. the podcast. Every episode gives me a lot of joy and makes my work commute much more fun. Take care and have a nice day. Uh, we're I, happy that you're enjoying it. I will have a nice day. This episode, I mean, this email actually was one solid block of text, but I went and broke it up to make it easier for you. Thank you. <laughs> So no problem, Vin. I will edit your emails for you, because I'm just that cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, then there's one more. This is also from Rembrandt, a.k.a. Uh, Snarky Remy. It's his second email. Which mm-hmm. There was such a gap between episodes, between us recording, that we have two emails from him. Yeah. The, the other one was meant to be read before the previous episode, so... This mm-hmm. one's... He, anyways, you'll... We'll, we'll, everyone will find out. Fine. We'll just start reading. Uh, hello again, Loincloth Hour. Just finished listening to your episode discussion of Deadly Force, and it's definitely been one of my favorite episodes you've put up. You did many funny moments, and I like how in-depth you went and on what made the episode so good in terms of storytelling and character development. I also quite enjoyed your guest and his taking commentary all throughout the episode. Yes, thank you, guest. Thank you. <laughs> I will agree that I wouldn't call Dracon Broadway's nemesis, but yet it's rather interesting that every time Dracon appears in the series... Broadway's right there to be instrumental in taking him... Uh, so I think it's fair to say that Broadway is Dracon's nemesis, but not the other way around. And another thing... I, I don't remember enough of the Dracon episode, so even though if Broadway comes back in then... I think, like, in usually, if Dracon think, shows up, I usually just, like, check out for the day. Oh my god. I'm like, whatever. What? This but you guys were, like, important. simping after him last episode. No! <laughs> I was! He was hating on him, remember? I was what hating guy? on him. I you guys Dracon... were both on him. Okay, Dracon makes me laugh. You literally, he's all, like, you, you were honey. calling Hakon a twunk. He is a twunk. That doesn't mean I like him. That I, I don't know. I don't call people twunks unless I like them. <laughs> I'm just speaking like, from okay, experience. He's, he, he's not in good episodes, generally. Like, Deadly Force is the one good episode that he's in. The rest of them suck. Okay, another thing I like that stems from this episode is that by now, the things that make the trio... Lose it, most of all, have been established. This being the pack for Lex, Demona for Brooklyn, and criminals using guns for Broadway. Mm. Mm-hmm. But out of the three, Broadway's the one in full control of his particular berserk button, as we never see him lose his cool and go in all gung-ho like Lex in Brooklyn. Yes. Which just makes me like the big guy all the more. Yeah, that is true. Like, we see Lex in Brooklyn, like, lose it whenever, like, their nemeses show up, but Broadway tends to uh, keep it together better. Yeah, even if he is, like, It's because Broadway is not, like, a hateful person. No. No, he's just a big, sweet guy. Really looking forward to your next episode, mainly because I want to hear your thoughts on Macbeth, but also to hear how you tear down the episode, especially the animation. Yeah. I, I hope we fulfilled that for you today. We, I, I, I definitely made a few Goblin <laughs> Goliath comments. <laughs> and we also make fun of Macbeth's expressions quite a bit. Oh my god. I, yeah. I know I definitely did. Like, it's not, it's not just his expression, it's like difficult for us, the viewers... To understand what the expressions are, or like what they're meant to convey. Uh. But I'm saying it right now. How did Gargoth not become a thing in Manhattan <laughs> until so much later in the series? Bronx ran through who knows how much of the city, and yeah. then he and Goliath stood there in front of a lot of people, and it's never brought up or mentioned ever again. What the hell? There's a lot in this episode that's never brought up again. It's almost it like was, um, it's almost like portions of it aren't even canon, or it was a mass hallucination. Yeah, you know, the authorities always think of explanations for these things. Yeah, of course, of course, you know. It was or you like, know, it would be funny if like after Goliath like flew away, that they just stayed on the scene. Like one of the characters is like, "Eh, it's New York." And then I like, would have oh, loved oh, that. <laughs> See, like, that would have made the episode ten times better. It's just, like, the random New Yorkians. I, a big part of why I like the Sam Raimi movies is just because of how fucking, like, legit all, like, the New Yorkian yes. pedestrians are. Uh-huh. You mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. I love that. Oh, my God. All right. There I go, being long-winded again. 
I'll say farewell by letting Krupp know that hearing his comments in regards to Derek Mazza and Matt Bluestone put a huge smile on my face because they share the same opinion. Yes. Remy's just like out for blood for some of these characters. Good, because fuck these characters. Oh my god. Fuck Derek Mazza. Fuck Matt Bluestone. Like there are need there that. are characters I don't like, but it's like it doesn't mean like I fucking like want them like you can annihilated. Snip, snip. What the right Maggie the is like the one exception because Ma- no no yeah cut Maggie please get no rid. one fucking Derek is, is just as bad as no Maggie. one no, no he's she's he's, worse there, no he, they, she's no. so much Matt actually gets shit done Maggie makes every other. situation she's in gradually worse just by existing. Yeah, she, exactly. they're all t- put them all in the bucket. She Throw is them in the ocean. she is to gargoyles what James is to Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Donna. So, I don't okay, know. So Derek is like the Donna of this metaphor. Okay. Well, she's one okay. of them. <laughs> Twin Peaks fans, if you also like gargoyles, you'll be in for a treat. Because I just recently watched Twin Peaks, and Sid is also a huge fan. Yes. So we just talk about the two shows all the time now. We talk about Twin Peaks, Gargoyles, Always Sunny, um, sometimes mm-hmm. Drake and Josh, but that's mostly on my end. <laughs> And Star Trek The Next Generation. But that's mostly on your end. (laughs) This whole thing started with Star Trek meme. Um, Anyways. Uh, I think we can call it there. No, 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 I'm I'm not touching the email. email. Oh, there's more? Yeah. We're we're almost through. I'm trying to... Okay. I consider Bluestone to be just plain bland and boring. Yes! But in regards to Derek, I got a bunch of reasons why he's one of the characters I outright hate the most in the show. Because he's a fucking idiot. I'm absolutely (laughs) looking forward to hearing Croup's own thoughts and sharing my own as well. Keep up the great work, guys. Yes, I will keep up the great work of hating the same characters that you do. I'm going to... (laughs) I'm just going to be the guy that sits at the side and calls, like, all the characters out on their bullshit and just talk about how preppy, like... Like they deserve. Yeah, or I'll just talk about how blonde and preppy Owen looks. Okay... I don't like Owen because of his appearance. I like it because of his demeanor. Okay, you just you, well, you like identify with every single Butler character in like fiction. What you do? Wait, you, what other Butlers do I identify? With? You like the scene in Batman where like he pulls an April Fool's joke. You like Alfred, Alfred from Batman. You like <laughs> Alfred. Do I like? I mean, I like Alfred. It's not like he's my favorite character. Yes, he is. You love Alfred. I don't even know who my favorite... My favorite Batman character is... Alfred. Um, not Alfred. <gasps> what was her name? Oh my god. Barbara? No, pink-haired girl from Batman Beyond. Oh, Max? Yes, it's really Max from Batman Beyond. But Although, he... but Harry the... also jokes that Max is his Alfred. Max is the new Alfred, so that's the joke. Maybe you are maybe you are onto something. So. Yeah. <laughs> No, I know. I mean, I also like Wadsworth a lot from Clue. He was a butler. Yeah, you quote yes, Wadsworth you, literally uh, every day. See, okay, okay. My point stands. You just butlers love, are cool. You love butlers. <laughs> Owen isn't a butler. He's a personal assistant. I'm surprised and you haven't it, talked he's about. He's in charge like, of blowjobs. I, I don't surpri- think groups ever. I'm surprised you haven't talked about like Jeffrey from Fresh Prince, the best fictional butler of all time. I haven't watched a lot of Fresh Prince. What? Yeah, it's I so know. good. I love that show. I've watched like a few episodes. I, I just I don't I don't know if we got the channel it was on when I was a kid. I don't know what happened. I, it was always on for me when I was growing up, and I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. but well, yeah, thank you, Remy, for your your both your emails. They're very fun to read. Yes, and thank please, you. Please send us more. Thank you, Remster. Rem Rem Remicus. Remoir. Why are we giving him nicknames? Because, you know, he's just a good fella. He's, yeah. You run out of things to talk about, so now you're just <laughs> rambling whatever comes to mind. Listen, People okay, my brain comments. is, like, fried after, like, the fucking, like, regurgitation comment, okay? <laughs> I'm never I'm never gonna recover from that. Oh my god. Okay, I hope that we get fan art of that. I, no! I hope so, no! too. No! Okay, like, we already found fan art of Lexington <laughs> boring Broadway. Now we need some of Owen, uh, just like... Thanatos like a bird, but it's all come From July. No! I'm thinking of, like, that scene from Ghostbusters where, like, Bill Murray gets slimed. <laughs> he 
Yoran is like attacking me right now to, to keep this from happening. Yeah, so anyways, um thank you thank you thank you for listening to the Loincloth Hour podcast. I think we're yes. at the end. I think so too. Are you two gonna introduce yourselves? Oh yeah. Yeah, or, welcome or... to the Loincloth Hour. <laughs> no, okay, I'll give you... Okay, uh, I am Manicorn. You can find me uh, on the Manly Unicorn Twitter, um, on Croup, on Fur Affinity, he or get... uh, yeah. I think Manicorn on Patreon. <laughs> yeah. And you can also send me money if you want to. All right, Sid, your turn. Um, hi, I'm Sydney. I'm a Leo. I like long walks in the park. Um, you can find me on Fur Affinity as Alistair Alderman and Twitter as Sid Scripps. Um, if you want, like, writing-related, like, uh, commission work, uh, I can provide this. I will literally write almost anything that you send me an idea of, and I need money. I'm a poor college student, and, uh, yeah, um, spare change shake rattles yes. soda can spare change i am open for commissions as well if anyone wants like spanking stories i actually i actually I'm, don't need I'm money, good at so, those. i mean that was just a joke oh well i do send me money no i'm just kidding i think uh, but if you do want if you do want a commission story of a hunky cartoon character spanking another hunky cartoon character on your man would you like to give your places Hiran? sure uh, you can find me on Twitter at at pangolin underscore hiran h i r a n, or on Fur Affinity as once three 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 three. That's four four threes. four threes. Yes. Four threes. Um, probably some other places that I'm not thinking of, but d- doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> if you can find me fine. there, you'll find me out elsewhere. It's fine. Cool. Yeah, uh, all right. Yeah, should we say something really crazy to end this episode? Um, I think that um, Xanatos has learned his lesson in prison. I think, you know, because he said he was lear- he learning, he's learning all sorts of things in prison. Well, it was yeah, a learning a experience. Learning experience. Um, yeah. He's... <laughs> Salad tossing. All right. Thank you, everybody, <laughs> for listening. Have a wonderful um, day of the year.